Welcome in everyone to our Crack Rackets coverage of the 2023 Division III Men's Tennis Tournament. Alex Druskin joined here by a returning champion on our Crack Rackets streams. Now, he's been on, I don't want to say a sabbatical, as I think he's found his real passion in life, but of course many of you will remember a man I consider one of the essential founders here at Crack Rackets. A man now serving as the head coach men's and women's tennis teams at Rockhurst University. Welcome on to our stream, James Foster McDonald. Jamie, how are you doing today? Fantastic. Can't think of a better way to spend yeah. Saturday morning college tennis down at the campus. Nobody! What are your thoughts as someone who not only coaches a Division II team, but obviously played Division III tennis as well, to have all three national championships on one site? What does that mean to for college tennis? Oh, it's just so much fun. Uh, it's just great exposure for everybody, whether it's people who are spectating, whether it's players who you know kind of see the other side of things. Uh, it's awesome. And I think when you start to get to some of these top teams like Case Western, you know um, that they have also included other D2s and AIs in their schedule. So they might have a little bit more familiarity there. Uh, but in general, having everybody in the same spot is just awesome. And it's great. It's a great spectacle for college tennis. Absolutely. It's going to be a really fun couple of weeks of tennis. And obviously, we've got some fun battles for you throughout the course of the day. We start off here on our stream with the Division Three Men's Quarterfinals. It'll be back-to-back -back sessions. We'll play them 9 a.m. and hopefully a 12 p.m. start for the second set. A couple of interesting matchups on our screen. Let's start with perhaps the one that may be on the more lopsided side. The reason I say that is if you are a follower of Division Three tennis, one of the biggest storylines over the last half decade has been the rise of this Case Western Reserve program, led, of course, by the head coach of Case Western, Todd Wojciechowski, who we have been fortunate enough to speak with pretty frequently here at Cracked Rackets. His passion, enthusiasm for college tennis permeating through the results of this Case Western program. NCAA finalist last season, national indoor champions the past two years. Talk to me about the rise of Case, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, they've just been phenomenal. Uh, I think as you look, even just on paper, uh, what they've been able to do is special. You can take a look at their schedule and results. They've only dropped four matches this year. All of those were non-D3 opponents. So you're looking at either Division II or NAI, a really strong squad. So yeah, they are, look, they're, they're the favorites for a reason. Um, and when we look at that matchup today, it's going to be really important for Gustavus to, you know, dig their heels in and doubles if they want a chance at this thing. Uh, because if they let the momentum slip early, it's going to be trouble, especially because of the depth and the strength of the case uh, squad, especially in singles. Yeah, absolutely. And you see Case already off to a quick start here at the number one doubles position. It's the yep. senior James Hopper, partnered with the junior Ishwa Aduru. This duo, one of the top ranked teams in the country, 15-0 and at the number one doubles position this season. And I don't have to tell all of you listening in, as all of you, of course, Division Three followers, but perhaps we picked up an additional college tennis fan or two along the way. How does Division Three's format differ from Division One? There's going to be three double sets played simultaneously. Each of these double sets is worth one individual point. It's best of nine, not best of seven points here in the Division Three realm. As you see the explosive up hopper overhead on the right side of your screen they'll get that scoreboard corrected obviously on the other side of the net from case western today a program that has been a staple of success in the division three tennis world since its founding gustavus adolphus look for this gustavus adolphus team 26 and 10 miac champions another 9 and 0 season for them they get to this Division Three quarterfinal. Dare I say, Jamie, with a little bit of an upset, knocking out U Chicago last year's champions 5-4 in the round of 16. Yeah, big upset for them. Uh, this is also a team that they flipped the script, right? They played Chicago in late March, lost to them 2-7. Um, so to go from that to beating them 5-4 to get to this stage um, in the postseason, absolutely phenomenal result for them. Now, you know, it's, I'm sure it was. Uh, I'm sure it was emotional. They had a little bit of home home court advantage there playing against U Chicago for that regional, but still, a, a really a, just a great upset, a great win for them, and they've got to be stoked to be at this stage for sure. Absolutely. And by the way, just another reminder on that format, it's a pro set, not a single set. So we're playing to eight. Breaker at seven all. Hopper, Duru, rocking and rolling here. 
to take on the Adolphus duo, Nagani, senior out of Rochester, Minnesota. Daniel Fauché, senior out of the Netherlands. That's your matchup at the number one spot. And that's a matchup happening on court seven through 12 on the national campus, should you want to follow that match individually, which we won't feel offended. Take it to court number two there. Apologies as we make a little bit of a court switch here. You'll see it on your screen. Here we go. Now we're rolling. Everyone's waking up this morning, including our technology. We do have a couple of changeovers again. We're just making sure all of our cameras are set here. Now's probably the perfect time for us to introduce that second matchup on your screen. And that's one we think it promises to be a doozy. Middlebury taking on Bowden. These are two teams, national championships in the last decade. Of course, this Middlebury program capturing their last title back in 2018 actually beat Bowden in that 2018 final. Bowden, though, returning the favor, the 2016 National Championship over Middlebury. Of course, these two teams have already faced off twice this season, Jamie. Both of them battles. What are you expecting in our second quarter final? Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of familiarity between these, right? They mean the regular season for NESCAC, they mean the NESCAC uh, final, that championship, and now here they are again. So it's going to be tight. Um, you know, this doubles point, or really, as you said, your three doubles set individually, this doubles section here, incredibly important um, for both teams, but in my opinion, a little bit more important for Bowdoin, um, because as we saw in that NESCAC championship, Middlebury got down 2-1 after dubs and still found a way to win 5-4. So I think Bowdoin, if you're Bowdoin, you really got to focus here and get those points because you've seen the strength of Middlebury in singles. Yeah, it is, I mean, very much a math game. It's crazy. You sweep the doubles, folks. You only got to yep. find two singles wins. Like, yep. it, it's, it really is that simple. Yeah. No, it completely changes things. And, and I, look, I'm, I'm biased, of course, but I love that <laughs> D3 format. It just puts that much more, you know, importance and, and pressure and focus on the doubles. Now... Granted, most of the time that you have sort of a, a matchup of like teams or that are close in level, mathematically, usually it ends up 1-2 or 2-1. So effectively, it becomes the doubles points like we see in D1 or D2 or elsewhere. Um, but it is fun knowing that you could you could get up 3-0 and only have to take two of the six singles. That's crazy. Um, but it, it's a fun little wrinkle, and, and I personally like it. Yeah, no, I mean, certainly adds additional value to every doubles court. Can't stack the lineup. Can't just sacrifice a point. Or you can, but it's a full point, I suppose. Yep. And as you see, left side of your screen here. 40-30 spot for Middlebury, that Middlebury number one doubles duo you see on your screen, the duo. Well, it's a familiar face to me, Aiden Harris, the senior out of Indianapolis. He's partnered with junior Noah Labor. This duo of Harris and Labor, 12 and seven overall on the year. Excuse me, break point. As you see, it is an early break. Right back for Bowden. Duo of. And there's two Bradleys, but let's be clear this one's Tristan. Tristan Bradley, the junior out of Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania. 
with the junior Reed Staples out of Plano, Texas. Duo 12 and 6 overall in dual match play, but off to an early two love lead on court number one. We'll take you down to the twos on both sides now. And our courts will be rocking and rolling. Of course, we'll adjust as we go. Good hands at the net from Case. But how about this? It's a deciding point, break point chance for Gustavus Adolphus. And look, some of you may not know the advanced metrics, things like world tennis number, universal tennis rating. When you get to the singles portions and you look at those ratings, it is a heavy advantage for Case Western over Gustavus Adolphus. So it does feel like, again, if you're Gustavus, what, need at least two doubles, JB? Maybe even all three? Yeah, I think so. And, and granted, you're also talking about a squad who, if you're looking on paper, came off a big upset. Um, you know, if you're looking at ATRs with like uh, WTN, whatever you're looking at, uh, against yeah. Chicago. But yeah, overall, if you're looking, the, the pathway seems pretty clear um, that they have to get up in doubles, right? And that is what they did against Chicago. Um, they actually had a decent chance to go up 3 0 against Chicago and um, ended up narrowly losing uh, in that breaker 7 8 at three doubles. Um, and, and really, that probably kept Chicago in that match. Granted, Hugh Davis did a great job down the stretch and ended up taking care of things, uh, you know, grabbing three singles, taking the 5 4. Uh, but yeah, I think the pathway looks very similar there, where if you're Hugh Davis, you got to get up in doubles. Uh, because if you get down there, again, like we've talked about, the strength and the depth of Case is just going to be really difficult to match. And Case already running off to a four love lead at that number one spot. Yep. Of course, we'll keep our eye. We'll get you to three in a moment here. Want to introduce all of these players. We'll start on that right side. You saw the deciding point hold for Case oh. Western. I will say, though, if you take a look at three doubles, you save us already up 3-0 on Case. So yeah. um, that's big time there. And I think that's, if you're looking at this right now, especially with how one doubles is going, they need to hold there um, and then hope for the best of two. Yeah, but now a little love 30 deficit. As you see again, for Case Western, right side of your screen, Diego Maza. Senior out of Walnut Creek, California. Partnered with Chris Avizzano. North Hilden, New Jersey. Look, there's urgency for this case team. It's the last year you have Hopper. James Hopper, one of the top singles and doubles players in the country now the past two seasons. Has taken, what, like three total losses? I'd have to go back and look, but it can't be many. Uh,
We'll have Gustin back in just a minute, just a quick reminder too. Uh, given the format we have here at D3, even the play site is showing that match as completed at one doubles for Case against Gustavus. Um, it is 6-0 and they're playing that pro set to 8. So uh, Gustavus is still alive in there, but obviously Case uh, in a pretty good position of 6-0 and one dubs. Yeah. 
Apologies, folks, we've had some technical difficulties on our side. Should be good to go here now. Alex Gruskin back. Jamie McDonald is going to be joining me in a moment. Should have our audio fixed. And as you see, it's a 7-2 lead here for Hopper and Aduru on court number one. That's your most lopsided result right now across the board. We are now back from our technical difficulties. Jamie, you can hear me? Yep. All yeah. right. The, the robot commentator is gone. I am back, folks. You see a 7-2 lead here for Hopper and Aduru on court number one. We'll just do score updates across the board here now. Get you all up to speed. We will have to do some reintroduction. Everything's close over in Middlebury Bowden, as expected. Again, a rematch between the two conference foes. Both matches going 5-4 this year. So we know that one's going to be qu close. The question is, again, for this duo of Hopper and Aduru, 15-0, they have run away with things at the number one spot. That's not particularly surprising, is it, Jamie? 
No, no, not at all. I mean, that's uh, that's a particular strength of this case team, and especially when you have a player like Hopper, you're going to get really good looks at one singles, one double. So um, pretty much as expected over there. Um, but yeah, especially on the middle, very and vote inside, things are really, really tight, which makes for a fun, fun little session of doubles, right? Mm. And uh, even though things are super tight, there's there's always that looming possibility that it goes 3-0 or 0-3 oh, one way, right? So like we talked about before, just puts that much pressure um, on each and every court. So really fun stuff over there. Absolutely. And getting our scoreboards up so we can start jumping around. Show you. I think I know you're looking to see right now. You see the 7 2 lead. Amy and Fouché able to fight off a match point. 7 2 Case Western on court number two as well, Jamie. They've run away with things. That senior Maza. Yeah. And again, there's a little urgency right now for this Case program, is there not? It's an older group who have won a couple national indoors. NCAA finalist last year. Does feel like it's a little bit now or never, right, for this Case team? Uh, yeah, I don't know about now or never, but uh, yeah, sure. certainly you can see in the now section of that, and especially when you have you know somebody like Chicago who would have been in this position and would have been you know, tough for them, obviously an emotional one for them as they lost in the final last year. Yeah, this is big. Um, the way the draw has broken it and just generally how things look, the, the trajectory of their season certainly feels like, look, this is ours to win. We're the favorites, and now they got to go out and prove it. Absolutely, and so. And another break point chance here. We are going to hop off these courts, I promise, in a moment. Show you some of the other action going on. We're now rocking and rolling. Yeah, that serve from Hopper will do. Sets up a match point. Or Case Western at the number one spot again. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on that number two position as well. Maza Provenzano. 7-2 lead for Case. And there it is, 8-2, Case Western. Gets on the scoreboard first. Again, double sets worth one point individually on the scoreboard. I don't know what I was or wasn't in robot mode, mode for, Jamie, so I might be repeating myself here. I apologize for that fact. Meanwhile, you see at the number two spot, Middlebury's making a little bit of a move. 5-3 for Epstein and Ward. Epstein, the sophomore from New York. Ward, senior out of Wilmington, Delaware. It was 11 and 7 overall together on the year. And for those of you at home wondering, 6 4 Gustavus Adolphus at that number three spot for now. They've been nursing that break lead for a while. Not match points on the left side of your screen. Play site hasn't adjusted to the D3 format, Jamie, clearly. Yep. We'll have to develop that play site setting. So you got break point chances on both of your screens now. And in fact, it is another break. So 6 3 Middlebury pulling away at the number two doubles position. We'll take you down to court number three there. First break point fought off by Maza and Provenzano. Yeah, if you're the, uh, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, Jamie, but as we look at that Middlebury Bowden match, very even everywhere. That's expected, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very even across the board. And like you talked about, you you look at other metrics as well, but even if you go in and try to pull the power sixes on UTR, I think overall their power six is still within a point uh, across all six players. So we know this is going to be tight. These are teams who have seen each other. There's history not only this season, but in previous ones in the postseason conference in regular season. So um, these are squads who know each other very, very well. Um, and that just adds to the drama. So it makes for a bit of fun. But I do think there's this. Uh, there's a particular focus on this uh, on this double session here for Bowden, especially given what we saw in the NESCAC championship. Absolutely, and it's a match point for Case. 
Lob goes long. It's a 2-0 lead Case Western. 8-1 win at the number one spot. Excuse me. 8-2 wins at the number one and two spots, Jamie. I don't want to say beat down, but this is what we expect from the defending NCAA finalists, is it not? Yeah, I mean, it's convincing, right? They did their yeah. job. They came out, um, and, you know, they got a lead, held it, and they put their team in a really good position here. Uh, interested to see what three doubles can do. Um, you got to feel like Berkey Davis, they have to win this to even stay in this match, uh, especially if you get down to a team like Chase 3 0 after doubles, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, I feel like the 2 1 keeps them a little bit alive here, so we'll see what they can pull off at 3. Absolutely, and again, here at this number three spot. Let, oh, we see that ball. It's a good read, it's a good get. Let the record show my pronunciations were flawless earlier. I just, unfortunately, <laughs> was in robot mode. But Skorob Terakanabi, Terakanambi, excuse me, senior out of Minnesota. Serving here on the near side. Partnered with Marco Severo. Severo, sophomore out of Brazil. They're nursing that lead well. There's no doubt about it. They've been up a break for about the majority of our coverage here. And as you alluded to, Case Western goes into singles up 3 0. They only need two wins. It's a tough deficit for any team to overcome. When was the last time you saw a team drop three double sets win the match, Jamie? Oh, man, it is it is rare. I'll tell you, it is rare. I'd have to go back and look, but um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig right now. because it's You, been, have, it's you been have to have seen it at least once. Yeah, there was definitely, um, there was a postseason time. It actually might have been, hold on, Middlebury, like, uh, let me do some digging here. All right, we're, he's out. we're getting the IT department on it, folks, as you see. By the way, four all left side of your screen as we're showing you the threes. It's showed Mares, Julian Wu. Surfing here for Middlebury. Wu, freshman of Tenafly, New Jersey. Mares, a junior. Adina, Minnesota. They kind of duo Fortier. Nels, Nice, excuse me. Fortier, senior out of California. He's the freshman out of Greece. As you see, again, Gustavus will have the chance to serve for that set on three. Eight, two victories for Case Western on courts. One and two. What it's worth, you look at this number three doubles team for Middlebury. They've played a lot of different options. They settled on Mares and Wu, nine and three overall in the season. This, uh, this was not the answer I was looking for, but I can tell you that the Bowdoin women's team did have a match this year where they lost, where they were down 0-3 after doubles and won the match 6-3, so. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly <laughs> what I was looking for. That is a data point. It's happened this season, folks. It's rare. Oh, it happens, but yeah, no, it, it's very rare. Uh, and most of the time, again, especially when you get to this stage, most of the time you're looking at 1-2 or 2-1, which, like I said before, effectively becomes that doubles point that we see in D1 or D2. But um, it is interesting, and, and like I said, sort of the fear and the pressure that's looming with that. Um, it's like, man, you can't get down 3-0. It just, it just adds that much more to the mix. Absolutely. As you see, by the way, again, looks like it will be a 6-7 hold. Davis will have the chance to serve for it. Meanwhile, game point chances here for Middlebury for 5-4. Gonna get you quickly over to two here now as it is a 5-4 hold. I believe, no. Yeah, it is. They, they just did a little double take on us. Had to go grab the towel. Let's get you over to two immediately. Epstein and Ward are serving for the match. Oh, okay, this is exactly what I was thinking of. Uh, I just, I didn't want to risk it and be wrong. So it's the 2016 Bowdoin match uh, against John Hopkins. Uh, and that was, I believe, in the quarters. Let me go back and look. I like that. John Powell informs yes. me that, and shout out to John Powell, who I believe, former Case player, am I, if, yes. I, if memory serves yes. me correct. Case last year against Whitewater went down 0-3 third round of NCAAs. That's right. I knew there was a case example, but I didn't know it off the top of my head. This is this is the one I had in my mind. This was, this, I was still playing at the time. But yeah, Bowden 2016 going down 0-3. 
uh, to John Hopkins going back, winning that 5-4 to advance to the semis. Meanwhile, we got a match point here. Neil Epstein, Robbie Ward, chance to make it 1-0 for Middlebury. And they do it. No love lost. You get the target, you take it. One love Middlebury. And we're going to go over to one where it's a game point chance now. For Bradley and Staples of Bowdoin. And indeed, they do hold 474. So they're a game away. We'll take it back down to three. Make sure we have action on our screen at all times. Of course, I also want to get us back to his split screen. Gustavus serving for that set on 376 for City Arrow. For Kanambi. Alex Gruskin, James Foster McDonald here. Big return to start. More case on three. You got a favorite for me right now, Jamie, in this D3 tournament? Uh, I mean, I think it's got to be case. Uh, not only just the body of work throughout the season, but what we've seen thus far. Um, I think it has to be case. I'm, I'm really curious to see um, what happens in the in the matches for the rest of the day. Um, if you want to talk a little bit about those, but the bracket's Please. really interesting. Um, no, I mean, I think I think there's a lot of really strong squads out here, right? Uh, however, if you're looking just across the board. In this case, Western team has earned the right, in my opinion, to call themselves the favorite. And so, unless we see anything to the contrary, I, I think we have to continue um, along that path. But, um, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen at all. And especially if you have a day where a couple people play some good doubles, you get one of those 3 0 leads or 0 3 deficits like we've talked about. Um, a lot of different things, a lot of different things can happen. But um, no, we've got some great matches left today, like WashU and CMS going on. I believe it's noon Eastern, so I will not be around for that one, but uh, it, it's going to be great, and I'll try and follow along as much as I can. Uh, I believe at the same time you have Tufts and Emory playing, um, so some really, really fun matches that we've got lined up for the rest of the day. A lot of history, too, across the board there. Programs, sure. as you mentioned, like CMS, Claremont Mud Scripts, for those that don't know the acronym, of course, Wash U, Washington University in St. Louis, Emory, Middlebury, I mentioned Bowdoin, what these two programs have accomplished, national championships in the past decade for each of them. Yeah, it's going to be a special. We've got all the big guns, other than, I suppose, Chicago knocked out by Gustavus Adolphus, the defending NCAA champs 5-4 in the round of 16. It's a match point. Coming up here for Gustavus on three. Bowden two points away from the match on one as well. It's a job well done. And it keeps this match interesting, no doubt. Yep. So it's a win for Gustavus Adolphus at three. Case takes the doubles 2-1. We'll go full screen now here on court number one where it's a match point for Bowden. We knew this match would be good. Look, it's the third time these three teams have played. Advantage, Bowden, 2-1 now. Overall, as this time, once again, Bradley, Staples, 8-4 over Harris and Labor. And that makes it a deciding double set for the advantage. And we'll head to court number three again. Right now, 2-1, Case Western leading Gustavus. All here. Mayors and Wu serving on the far side. Again, is this a rematch? Looks like it is. Mayors and Wu dropped the team's battles in the conference tournament. So it was Bowden Fortier, Nice 8 6 in that matchup. Excuse me. 
Yeah, that was the conference tournament. Yeah, and they also played each other during the regular season as well. So two two pairings that are very, very familiar with one another. For what it's worth, Wu and Mayer is an 8-6 win when they played in the regular season. So yeah, 1-1 one, one yeah. splits across the board. And boy, big picture. Again, Middlebury a 5-4 win in the conference tournament. Bowden a 5-4 win in the regular season. You feel like this could very well be the swing. Yeah, oh, 100%. I mean, how many times do we see it? Even if you wanted to two when we're talking um, that doubles point, right? Effectively, we've got the same exact thing going on right here. Um, so they know it, right? Um, they know it absolutely, and they're in a bit of a dogfight right now. 5-5 five, five in this pro set. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, let the record show that missed overhead. Not an unforced error as it was off of a double bounce. Of course, it's always something to watch the coaching battle within the coaching battle. We have a little bit of that today, don't we, here on court? Two teams that, again, know each other so well. I place that still a little bit confused here on the set and pro set format, but just a reminder, we're still going to eight. There's still plenty of tennis left to be played here on three. Absolutely, as we're on serve six five. Middlebury leading Bowden, Alex Gruskin, James Foster McDonald. Of course, one of the OGs here at Crack Rackets, but more importantly, head coach now of the men's and women's programs at Rockhurst and Jamie, as you were so kind to offer us your time here today. I want to offer you some time. Talk to us about what's going on at your D2 men's and women's programs. How's it rolling? It's good. Um, it's been a great experience. I'm really, really excited about some of the recruits we've got coming in on both sides. We've got young teams. Uh, this past season was the first time that I had returning players. Um, so it's just a little bit different, um, right? You, you come into you come into a situation and you don't always know what to expect. Um, for me, it's I had some familiarity. I grew up in Kansas City, so I knew of the college, had some connection to players that were there as well as former players uh, who kind of helped me along the way um, just kind of some, some understanding of the school itself the program all of that um but no it's been it's been a ton of fun and man just any excuse to be around college tennis and uh you know give these players a great experience as we're in here it's just it's just so much fun to do and for me selfishly obviously i'm, I'm here on a saturday morning anyway so i can't get enough of it um and i'm sure they think i'm crazy uh, but you know that's just part of the fun i think you have to be a little bit crazy to be the college tennis coach 100 so. <laughs> percent the passion required borders on craziness and again we appreciate all of you taking the time to join us in the chat want to hear your thoughts throughout the course of the day as well i like ransom cook there's nothing to do in the winter in brunswick maine other than crush beers hang with the boys and slap four hands let's go Bowden. well said well said <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it yeah, i don't know how you counter that I mean, yeah <laughs> exactly that's it's just a good point <laughs> We see again on serve 6-5, Maris and Wu trying to be aggressive to their credit. Ooh, a little let cord luck. And that forehand, I, I mean this with all affection, it's a slap on that, bo on that boat inside. It's something else. I, it's tough for me to see who's serving on that far side, but whoo! Yeah, he's going after it. I like it. You know, you never know what you're going to get. In. It's, it's a three doubles, right? It's, it's the same way when you're looking at, at D1 and D2. But, you know, you never know style-wise, okay, is it going to be straight up and down doubles? Is this just, you know, going to be the strong singles player who doesn't want to be on a doubles court, but he's there? But it, it, it's just always so fun, and it adds a little bit more break on. Um, it's going to be a battle. This is what you expect. Postseason, Division three, three doubles, these are going to be grinding matches. There's going to be a lot of returns in play. There's going to be some long broken points even like this that we're seeing right in front of us um this is just what you do to mix first and some entertaining too absolutely as it's game points by the way that's fortier serving on the fortier excuse me serving on the far side 
Nice at the net. The height disparity, the giveaway. On the ad, on the deuce side here, excuse me, Mayor's on the ad for Middlebury. So now we've identified everyone. Now you're all set. Six, five, Middlebury, but game points bowed into level things. It's a good return. You like that target on the I form, Jamie? Take that line. Yeah, if you've got it. I mean, again, look, if you're if you're at the point where you're hitting clean looks off off the serve and you can just pinpoint a target before and then hit it, why not? I think it's great. Absolutely beats him to the spot. Of course, stand this. Yeah. Stand this two back here, or one's going to go? Oh, five eye, two back. By the way, singles action about to get underway. Yeah. Over in the case, Gustavus sides so will bring that match back for you here in a moment. Just a great inside out return there. So here we go. You like do side choice? What what do you go with? What'd you see? I don't know. I mean, both are getting clean looks. I said it's a, a brilliant return from the ad side we just saw there. Um, but it's one of those things where you kind of look at your partner and say, who's taking it? Yeah. <laughs> and Wu says, I got this. Great wheels, but a better forehand splits the middle. So we stay on serve six all. And with that said, let's bring back our match on the other side of this USTA national campus. It's a 2-1 lead right now for Case Western, taking on Gustavus Adolphus. First match between these two teams this season, but as Jamie McDonald alluded to earlier, God, has it been a dominant year or Case Western in the D3 Tennis World. This Case team, a remarkable 30 and four overall, no division three losses so far in 2023. It's not too shabby, according to some. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. just gotta feel extremely confident going into singles here. Um, they feel confident. I mean, honestly, if you're Case, I think you'd still feel good if you happen to be down 0-3. So the fact that you're up 2-1 after doubles, you've got the lead. You're already expected to win. Favorite on every court. It's, uh, we'll see. We'll see what Drew Davis can come up with. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this, but actually there was a time last year where Case was down 3-0 to Whitewater, and they ended up coming back. To so you're absolutely right. Oh, you're brilliant. How'd you, how'd you pull that out? Of yeah, I don't, I just, I've, I've known that forever. They, they talk about it all the time. It's the talk of the town. <laughs> As it's an early deuce point because, of course, it is for Hopper. Senior James Hopper going to be at Virginia next season. Ridiculous year for him at Case. One at the top spot. Hopper hops his way to an opening break. You were just waiting to say that? Uh, it's all day long. It was the first thing I wrote down last night. Taking on Nick Ainey, the senior from Rochester, Minnesota. Ainey eating seven at the top spot. Just be tough cooking. Marcus Davis up top, Hopper in his last week on the job for this case team. Meanwhile, you see the battle continues in that deciding double set. I, I, not deciding double set. It's not deciding, is it? It the way it is. It, I mean, it like, is. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mathematically, it's the exact same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're either up the doubles point or you're down it. You're either up two one down it. I mean, it's 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 the same at that point. And I again, this is what you expect in tight matches. No, I, you, I defer you look to look at you. it the same way. I think you look at it the same way, especially at this stage where it's one one. I mean, it, it, effectively, it's the exact same. Absolutely. As you see, by the way, Case not up just a break at one. They're up a break here at two as well. Serving markers off. Okay, that makes much more sense. Just run 
Andy Lube Jr. 13 and five overall in the top two spots. Or Case is on the far side. Again, on sophomore Marco Siviero. Again, over 25 members on the Gustavus roster. It's healthy. They fill a full dorm. It's a big list. It's a big list indeed. As by the way, you see Bowden breaks. Excuse me, four, seven, six. So they'll serve for that set on three. Nine and nine, play in the top three spots for Gustavus this season. All right, come on now. Reskin, it might just be the scoreboard. The actual live stats are a little bit funky, but can we take a look at three singles on the case of Gustavus side? Because it looks like Gustavus may be up a early break there. I would love to head over to three. And indeed, it is an early break. There's something. And that's what you're looking for, right? If you're Gustavus, you're, 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 you're not fit. You're already the underdog. You're down after doubles. You're looking up and down the court. Hopefully. You know that he's yelling out, right? He's calling things out. Um, and you, you look for that sort of energy. Uh, and hopefully something that can swing some momentum and, and get you guys on their horse and uh, come up with some, hopefully some breakbacks and maybe some action in these first sets for Gustavus to kind of dig their heels in this team. Daniel Fauché. And overall on the year here at this three spot. Uh, 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 Tonto, Tonto the senior. Five overall. I mean, all the numbers for Case look good as expected. That's what's going to happen. When you don't drop a single division three match this season. Quickly pop back to two as it is a formal break point. And it is, I think, a quick break. Yeah, he already won 8 0. No, it wasn't a quick break, though. Or two love here for Aduru. Oops, apologies. I'll get that right for you in a second. That'll pop back on your screen. Obviously, 7 6 in that deciding double set. 15 all here. This is Nice serving on the near side for Bowden. Great points for three love. Love. Make sure we're keeping an eye on that three doubles action on, on the other side. So this is, Absolutely. This is what Even we want. Eventually, I'm going to hit the right buttons, folks. I promise. Yeah! 30 opening four. All right, I got to get court four set for us. That's good to know. Breakpoint chance is back. I know he had his opening too, and, and again, like we talked about before, this is what you expect to see. It, you know, 
D3, three doubles level, you're gonna see these longer points, especially since we're up, so you're gonna see longer points, maybe some broken ones, a lot of returns in play, um, which makes for really fun viewing on our end, of course, but uh, it's tough there, you gotta see from the bone side, he of course had that opening down the line, went for it, just overcooked forehand to touch. By the way, getting cameras four, five, six, ready to rock and roll for you in that case, just stay beside. Bear with us for a moment here, break point, Middlebury. A great serve from Nice to get out of the jam, and now it's a match point. Jamie said before the start of the match, he thought Bowden needed to take the 2-1 advantage. Middlebury having beaten Bowden. Multiple the comfortable three singles victories, excuse me. Finding three, uh, excuse me, finding four might be a little harder today. That concludes doubles play for court one. There it is. There it is, yep. Two, Bowden one. A two, one lead over Middlebury as we go into singles Bowden. play. So once again, the Polar Bears 2-1 going into singles play. We'll take a five-minute break. They're looking for in doubles. We'll get singles underway in just a few. It's the race to five. And a berth in the singles semi, or the semifinals. Yeah, you're feeling really good if you're voting right now. Um, that's exactly what you needed. I, I will point out, too, um, that during the regular season when these two played, it was a 5-4 decision, yes, for Bowden, as we mentioned. Um, and they did get down in doubles. It was a really tight uh, double session there with the ending in a breaker on two. So either way, they know how to win, and, and they're feeling okay about this. But the fact that they go up 2-1 just gives them a little bit of comfort, especially with what transpired in the next nice catch championship. By the way, okay, so we should have courts now everywhere. As you see, Gustavus running away with things here, but 3-0 lead for Hopper, 3-0 lead for Aduru, and we're going to do a little jumping around here. We're going to go straight to six, a court I know near and dear to Jamie McDonald's heart. As right now, Case Western, look at this. Another three-love lead. This time it's Casey Ishinuma. We love lead on Rafael Costa Hishinuma, 19 and 5 overall on the year. Costa 9 and 2. As that goes wide, this is where again, not that UTR World Tennis number of the end all be alls, but it gets pretty lopsided down the line. And that's again a testament to the depth the roster accrued by Todd. Todd Wojcikowski, excuse me, over these past few years at Case. Yeah, and this is, I mean, look, this is especially what makes Case so dangerous, not only having the depth, but, um, you know, that star power up top with Hopper. And they can just beat you at so many different spots, right? I mean, you're looking across the scoreboard now. Not only are they up after doubles already having that advantage, but, you know, they're looking good on pretty much all of these courts outside of three singles, right? Um, and so it, it's just really... Really, really difficult to look at, and, and sort of in this format, you're just Davis, you're looking down the line and seeing a lot of your seeing a lot of your guys um, already down a break in the first set. It's tough. It's tough. Look, there's a lot of tennis left to be played, of course, but this is why this is why Casey's had so much success. They're just dangerous across the board. Absolutely. from Costa on the other side and I know again as things get to crunch time Jamie and I'll do less talking let the tennis do the speaking but you're a head coach which is a hilarious thing for me to say out loud I'm sorry it's just no amazing. disrespect yeah, that, I just I, I just it's not hilarious in the best way like that's just awesome I'm so happy about it it, it never ceases to amaze me as you see this 30 all point here from Costa I'll hold my question for a moment and now I'll ask hour-long doubles point between Middlebury and Bowden. They've been there before, but what's the message to each team? 
It's tough. I mean, I'm not going to speak for either of these coaches. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for me, a lot of times it, it comes down to an individual level. Uh, you know, some some of the individuals I think go out uh, as they go out all into the singles court. They they ride high with the emotion. That's where they play their best. Um, some need to keep it cool. So I, you know, I obviously you defer to that coach to know them best. But um, I think on the both sides, there's there's probably a a message of familiarity of the hey we've been here before, right? And and they both have big matches um, this season that they can lean on where they can say hey look we've been in this position and we came out on top. Um, yeah, I think that's just simply how it is and, and when you have a matchup like this there's just so much familiarity and a little bit of comfort um, that hopefully you as a coach you you expect that the nerves are down a little bit but the problem is the stakes the stakes are high here so um, i think it's a lot of fun and as a coach you just got to have your, your head on a swivel as we go into singles and you descend across six courts um, and, and decide where you're going to be where your assistant's going to be how you're talking to each other what you want to attack because things just happen so quickly uh, and, and that's what's tough when you're all spread out you don't have the chance to touch every court all the time. Um, and, and so you got to delegate. You got to hopefully you can trust some of those seniors and those leaders on the team to take care of business on their court um, and, and go where you need it the most. Absolutely. As you see, speaking of quick, Hopper, five love. Took him roughly 15 minutes to get there. Yep. Looking a lot like the start in that doubles at one. Exactly. A man on the mission. Meanwhile, you see Aduru, the 3 1 lead here. Again, lopsided on courts one, two, three, and six. Let's go check in on the matches where it's, dare I say, fun. Right now, we'll start on court number four. Josh Christensen, or Gustavus Adolphus. Christensen, the sophomore out of Rochester, Minnesota. He's got the early break, 2-1 lead. But you see break point chances here for Ansh Shaw, sophomore out of Oak Brook, Illinois. Yeah, I don't care what the division number is. That's just good tennis. It's a great play. Yeah, I mean, he I see he's a lefty there. He's looking to pin him in the backhand corner. Came in at the right time. Um, that's just that's just a good finish to that. Gets the break back. Let's get stuff from Shaw. Can you see how we started action on singles for the boat on the worst side? That's a great question. As Shaw puts that forehand away, God, is there some bite on that ball. Looks like he's feeling pretty comfortable in that pattern. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're walking to court in singles. So we'll keep that on your screen as well. Alex Gruskin, Jamie McDonald here. Take us over to court number one to get us started in that Bowdoin Middlebury battle. We'll walk you through all the lineups across the board. Meanwhile, we got to get to Hopper. Oh, we got step one. Yeah, I know. I apologize. Camera's moving a little slowly here this morning. Again, they're also waking up. We might miss that Hopper set point, but. To be fair, quick set. Yeah, exactly. It's not our fault, it's his. Looks like Case also has. 
deciding for if you go up 5 0 or 6, so you can take care of that as well. You know what's funny is I think oh, the I think the, cam I think the cameras heard me slandering them, and they were like, no, we're fine. <laughs> And they just woke up, as you see, it is a six love first set for Hopper. Well, you look at the most recent ITA Division Three rankings, and for the record, again, I, I suppose they come out a little bit more infrequently, but Hopper's been a top five player for about three years now, Jamie. Yeah, and, and for good reason. I mean, he's, he's proven at playing at the one line for quite a long time. Uh, yeah, there's 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 no real surprise there. Um, he gets out. He, he gets out on court. He performs. Um, he's had great seasons year after year. Um, it's exactly what you want in your one player. Uh, that consistency, right? And, and now being a senior leader on the team, really showing the others how it's done. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, you just, you just can't ask for anything more in a, in a leader and a player one spot. Absolutely, and you see now cases up breaks on four of six courts. Yep. One, two, six, and now here on five, it's AJ Mahentheron. Mahentheron. Sophomore out of Fishers, Indiana. 19 and three overall on the year. Picking on Alex Bud. Bud. 15 and five this season actually leads Gustavus in wins. So this is, again, on most days, a must for this Gustavus team, that much more so given the scoreboard deficits. Yeah, I mean, regardless for this team, they're gonna they're gonna have to flip the script on some on the uh, some of the momentum of these first set uh, because really the only spot that's looking great for them is three. It's been a really good first 75 minutes for this case Western team. And yep. uh, as college tennis coaches, college tennis observers, you really do end up breaking the match into segments. We don't have formal quarters, but doubles point, first set, second set. And then on the day those matches are close, we have that fourth quarter, AKA those third sets. Meanwhile, singles underway, left side of your screen, obviously early everywhere. And it feels like we're gonna have a little bit more time with that match. But a fun one certainly on our hands. Bowden taking an 8-6 double set at three to take that 2-1 lead. And now at the top spot for Bowden. See on the near side of your screen, Tristan Bradley, 15-2 at the top spot this year. I'll take on Noah Labor. These two splitting their two matchups in the regular season, each with a 7 6 6 4 score line. Actually, that might be wrong. I think Labor's match was 6 4 6 4. It just says 7 4 in the first set on the scoreboard. So we'll call that a whoopsies. As you see, Bud's making a little bit of a push on five. Doing what he can, gain point chance here for Mahentheron. Again, with just how the scoreboards look. A rally's gotta start right now for Gustavus. It really does, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're on if you're on three, you can be as loud as you want, um, and you can be fighting, and, and you hope that that falls somewhere, but yeah, I mean, they're still grinding on four for sure. There's a, there's a lot of hope there. It looks like they've got a deciding point on four, but yeah, you, you got to hope that, that five gets flipped. Um, there's a little sign of life on six for Gustavus as well. Obviously, they're still down that break, uh, but it was looking worse. So they flipped things a little bit there, but yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. And you, you got to hope that those moments of momentum, they're coming with some volume, some emotion, uh, some positive body language. You, you got to hope that those carry and disseminate across the course. But I mean, again, it's, it's tough when. When you're already down, you're going up against the gauntlet okay, in this case. No, no, um, looks like Hopper's already got a few break points to start in the yeah. opening game of the second. Um, it's, it's just it's just difficult. Yeah, but there's still a lot of tennis left to be played. It's true. And again, we're getting to the ending of some first sets here. They're moving quickly. We'll hop around in a moment right now. Big deciding point. Is that a double? I think it is. So, okay, Gustavus does get a break back here on five. That's something they need. And maybe they can get the momentum turning as we head over to court number three on that Case Gustavus side. 5 1 Fauché. He's two points away from the set, Jake. 
Yeah, I mean, again, this is what we talked about. This is this is certainly the bright spot for Gustavus right now, um, and you got to hope that those courts are looking down and hearing him uh, as he takes care of that first set. Sorry, I beat you to it. No, it's, I don't hate the player, I hate the game. Scoreboard just happened to be pretty fast there. Yeah, no, it is a first set, so okay, one first set apiece. That was, that was fast. As we'll head over to court number, you want two or six? What do you think on that case side? Um, actually, can we take a look at four? All right, even better. We're gonna head to four, as you see, Bad matches, first sets really progressing. Meanwhile, again, very early action. It's the senior Aiden Harris from Middlebury. Left side of your screen, Harris 11 and six overall this year. He's taking on Reed Staples. Staples 10 and six this season. These two also split their two head-to-head -head matchups in the regular season. Look, I've watched a lot of Aiden Harris over the year. Kid can grind. We want to see. Yeah, that's going to be a long match here at two. If this one's the decider, we've got four hours on our hands. Very well could be. We know this one's, at least we expect it. It's going to come down to the wire. So I think we're going to see a lot of tight first sets. Definitely some splits. It's going to be fun here on this side. Davis right there, that's a tough error off the rack yeah. of Christensen. Again, we're on set point watch. Ooh, I think we gotta go to six. Yep, take us to six. We see Hishinuma closing in on a second first set now for Case. Mahentharon immediately loves 30 after getting broken. Go ahead, please. Yeah, it was no, all we're, we're fighting. So we're fighting on six here. Fighting on. With, fighting on set points. With all due respect to Costa, he's moving the ball fine. It's just not hitting through the court. Like he, there's just not the weapon right now to hurt his No, and, and I mean, stylistically, usually if you're looking D3 deep in the lineup at six here, you know, you're, you're not necessarily going to find your players with the biggest weapons. Uh, but you're right. I mean, there's just. He's not really penetrating through the court completely on his heels. You see him there 10 feet behind the baseline, just in a lot of trouble. And um, ultimately, he cannot get out of that jam. So here's another first set, two takes on six. So there it is, six, two. That's two. And let's quickly hop over to one. Here's why. Chances for Amy. He does break, he gets on the board. Okay. New set, new Amy. He got right. left there. Absolutely. Let's go over to court five. Now, of course, we're blocking a little bit here on Harrison Staples. Just so early in first sets everywhere. Yep. Like on that side, there's a couple openings if you're looking at, at break leads from Middlebury on three and four, but outside of that, it's, it's tight, and we expect that to be the case. And a reminder how this works Middlebury gonna need to win four 
singles matches. Bowden just needs three. Obviously, I know each double set's worth one. It really doesn't change that much about the scoreline, unless you can get that full sweep. Some battles lined up on that Middlebury Bowden side, I think. Especially through that lineup, we've got the early stages in the first set, you know, showing that shot tolerance, proving that, hey, I can stay out here for three hours. You're going to have to get through me, here's the pressure, you're going to have to finish points. And if you can do that, you can do that for four points a game, you know, so be a good to you. We'll adjust in the second set. But right now, it seems like they're digging their heels in on that and preparing for some physical battles out there. So that's just fun to see. Absolutely. It's a massive deciding point here for Mahentharan. It's a massive hold from 1540 down. So back in front goes AJ Mahentharan. 5 4 lead pace. Two first sets. Gustavus with the first set on three. 4 2 leads, though, for Case. Two and four spots will head to two next. Meanwhile, this match on two again. We're ten minutes in, I can just, I see it. Oh, yes. Excited for this matchup on two, folks. I think it's going to be a fun one. I'm just again, Bowden Middlebury. We knew it was going to be good. Yeah. Hour 30 minutes in, and has continued to deliver. We'll take to the court number three now. I want to introduce all those matchups you see. Aduru, the 5 2 lead on court number two. No dead time. Obviously, allowed on your screen, so we'll get you to court number four there. It's Shaw does hold for five two as well. Again, these first sets are moving fast. By the way, Hopper got the break right back. So six love, two one for Hopper. Get back to two there. Meanwhile, left side of your screen, Neil Epstein, and Peter Brooker. Brooker two and zero oh against Epstein during the regular season. Of course, Brooker, sophomore of Massachusetts. This year for Bowden, meanwhile, on the other side. Christina Rock Solid left for seven. Three position. I think that service marker is correct. I'm pretty sure this is Epstein serving on the near side. I'm pretty sure it's Bowden. Excuse me, Middlebury rocking the blue shorts. Okay, I think 
it just fixed the service uh, As long as that serving marker doesn't move, that was indeed a break. It is, again, Bowden rocking the all-whites. It's Middlebury with the blue shirts. Two all-service markers just straight up incorrect. Justin, on the case side, you want to take a look at court five. Looks like we have a set point, great, great point opportunity there. There's nothing I would like to do more. AJ Mahentha run. It's been an up and down set for the sophomore. For the deciding point set point. Be a third first set for Case, put them halfway home. Again, they're up 5 2 on courts 2 and 4 also. So the pathway is immense. Yeah, plus Hopper with that break back, already up 2 1, third above, serving on 1. Haven't lost a D3 match this year, folks. Set it at the start. That's huge. Had to have it, but had to have it. So we'll take you over to court number two. Maduro two points away. Couldn't tell if it said wide or not. No, that was a racket clap. That's what it looked like. Yeah, service marker's wrong. So it's a game point, not a break point. That's a 5-2 racket clap. That's a, yeah, you can have that one. I thought it looked wide. That, well, that's what I meant. Is, yeah, it, it looked like it was going like to land wide. Right? Definitely 30-40. Uh, 40-30, excuse me. And so here we go. Right, that one, he's like, no, you get one, not two. Mm -hmm. So now a dude will serve for the set. Meanwhile, these are game points, not break point chances here for Bowden on three, right? Bowden's the all-white. Middlebury's for sure the blue shorts. I'm, I'm very confident. I'm happy for you. <laughs> By the way, another one to look at. I know we're here 5-3 on chance, but another one to look at is six singles on that side. It looks like Gustavus has grabbed an opening break in the second set on six, so... One to keep your eye on as well, if you're looking for where your status could potentially get a couple of matches, get themselves in a better position on the scoreboard. Maybe you're hoping uh, that you split on six and get there. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, looks like Shaw beat us to it. Yeah, he did. To fourth first set for Case Western and Shaw at the number four spot. So Case is more than halfway home. And with Hopper up 6031, we'll get back to that court in a moment. Meanwhile, Rooker holds 4-3-2 on court number three. Again, want to introduce everything on that left side of your screen. So we'll have to court number four next. Three-one lead for Middlebury here. Julian Wu is working on that service motion. In the meantime, we're taking on Mark Nice. Again, a lot of rematches from the regular season. Nice face blue back in March. Nice with a two and three win. I'll tell you what, it's one thing to play. 
play someone in main, it's another to play them in the Orlando Heat. Little different conditions. Gonna change things up there. Yeah. Now it's a set point for Aduru. And I don't want to say de facto match points, but you drop two double sets and five first sets in singles, Jamie. I'm not going to make you do the research, but you can't trouble. imagine can't imagine a bunch of teams have come back from that. No, you're, you're in trouble. For, uh, especially it looks like Hopper's looking to break again. Got some great chances to go up serving 4-1 in that second set. So Things are looking alright for your case western. I've only seen it in person once. Michigan was up a doubles point five first sets on the USC 2020 National Indoor Semifinals. USC flips the script. In fairness, though, Nick Beattie was up a set to break on Stefan Dostinik, and it was like, all right, come on. Yeah. So perhaps you saw that one coming. Meanwhile, it is a 6-3 set to Aduru. So that's five. No, excuse me. That's four. The Hentheron has not finished, so that's our last first set. We'll go there now. Another interesting piece of this, too, is to bring Borges Davis uh, that 6-1 win. It looks like we are now down a break with Borges Davis in the second set. This is talk to serving 2-1. It's a good performance thus far for Case. No denying that. Yep. Certainly, and at least the way that things are going, a lot of these matches that are seeming tight may split go either way. Unfortunately, they don't have a chance to finish, but we'll see. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but Hopper is indeed serving 6 0 4 1 at the one spot. Looking pretty good if you pitch Weston. I apologize. Five. Final first set remaining again, four first sets. Actually, hold the point here. Obviously, going to take you to court number uh, five over in Middlebury Bowden. I want to take us to court one, though, in this case match because we might get 10 more minutes of Hopper if we're lucky. Six left, yeah. four one for the senior. Again, he'll spend his final season of college eligibility with the current defending NCAA Division I champions. Hopper headed to Virginia next season. Yeah, four hands like that, maybe you understand why. Take you down to court number five here. Is this forehand drop there? Uh, no, it went wide, but I'm just saying the pace more broadly. Oh, yeah. Curious, curious to hear your thoughts. What, what do you think the outlook is there with him going to UVA for that final year? Where is he? Where is anywhere he can make an impact? And the, the difference in level that you see? It's a great question. Here's the thing: he has the athleticism, he has the serve, he has the frame, he has weapons. It's how does he adjust to dealing with, again, people who can hurt him a little bit more than maybe typical Division Three top player can now. Again, it sounds as though Hopper's completely unblemished. Plenty of talented guys in the D3 world, but that, that's, that's a, a winning combination against any. That's her that forehand. I think doubles more than singles right away. I think there's absolutely a place for him in the Virginia doubles lineup this year. Yeah. Singles will be interesting. I'm curious to see. I mean, again, it's uh, you, you go from the top of the tree, yes, like we talked about, to good level, of course, but top of D1, uh, you know, we can't pretend like that's the same ball game. So I am curious to see how, how he reacts to that pace, uh, how he gets himself ready for that. And just, you know, for him, it, it's one season, right? So it, it's not like you have a long run way to get used to that physicality, to get used to what's coming at you at the other side of the net. It's, it's show up and play ball. Um, so. I, I certainly hope that he's able to make that impact. I think that'd be really fun to see such a transition. Um, I think there's a lot of guys in the NT3 world who would love to see the same, but I'm curious, and I'm certainly going to be watching it. Looks like 
case did consolidate the break on three, by the way. So after dropping that first set six one, they are up three one. Case looking pretty solid once again after taking that set on five seven five. So looking very good as they roll into the second set, even on some of these slower, more competitive courts, still in really good spots. Yeah, what's the sign of someone in complete control? It's the casualness with which Hopper's approaching the net. He's a game away here. Making it 3-1 case, so we'll hold on this court a little bit longer. Meanwhile, massive deciding point here, three all, Warden Bradley. I know something we know. on the Bowdoin Military side, you want to take a look at court one. Seems to be a bit of a bit of a dog fight there. I haven't spent that much time on their court. No, absolutely. That's the crazy part about Middle to Barry Bowden. I'm looking at the scoreboard trying to think where to go and it's, it's tight. Even, it's very tight everywhere. Yeah. Well, you have I mean, a break on two uh, sorry, you have a break on two for Bowden, a break on six for Middlebury. That's it. We are on yeah. serve everywhere else. And again, this this is what you come to expect. And sure. um, I think these players are also totally prepared for this sort of battle, right? You always you always hope that you can make a run, get up an early break, and roll with it. But in the back of your mind, you're you're prepared for a battle because you've seen these guys. You know what they're capable of. Uh, but I mean, for both of them, they should be feeling pretty confident. They've been able to pull this off five four one way or five four the other way. So uh, should be a lot of fun and a really great level of tennis. Good. That's a couldn't heat tell. check if it, it looked wide. Yeah, it did look a bit wide. I couldn't tell if it went. <laughs> Looks like oh, it did. It's, yeah, sure. I thought it might be wide from my view too, but difficult on these cameras far side. Yeah. The toss up. By the way, Mahentheron did close out his first set seven yep. five, so five first sets for Case. tough. That's really, really tough. And this is what it's all about for them, right? Backing up why they're the favorites. Um, and especially in these formats where you have to play matches, uh, so many matches to be able to get through, getting out of here as quickly as they can. Right? And so Hopper, so you can get off the court after a convincing 8-2 doubles win and a 6-0 Six one singles win, you're gonna be in the shape. Okay. And guess what? On a hot day in Orlando, get off the court before 11 a.m. Yeah, that's a win in of itself right there. Absolutely. And it's interesting too when when you realize I don't know, you realize you say you have the 9 a.m. slot, right? There, there's some people that might not want to play in the morning, but in a situation where later in the day you you start to battle the heat pretty good advantage right yep. doesn't take as big of a toll on you physically plus then you have a little bit more time to rest then it's uh it's nice absolutely nice. that uh, that to me is the key thing is it's like if you're a case you're like take as long as you want middlebury voted we play the winner like take six hours take seven hours it's match point number two now for hopper
There it is. Hopper makes it 3-1 Case. It's a six love, six one win at the top spot. That is not a score you see every day. No. Six oh six one at one singles. That is uh, that's convincing. And, and again, I think that's just that's just a gut punch if you're Hughes Davis, right? You're, you're trying to get in and battle and, and you look up to court one um, and, and it goes that direction. So difficult, certainly, but James Hopper, what we've come to expect and really his role on a team as a leader, um, also a performer, right? He's coming out here and simply taking care of business, showing people how it's done. So a great win for him. Um, Todd's got to be happy tasting a real good spot here. Absolutely, they're two points away. And again, they took five first sets, but as you see, Costa with a nice volley there. Middlebury, uh, excuse me. Gustavus is making a little bit of a push. They're up a break in the second set on six. They're up a break in the second set on four. Now, and and up a five, first set, up a first set on three, up a break in the first second set on five. Yeah, definitely making a push here. So here it is, and that allows us to again lock in on what's happening on the left side of our screen now. Deciding point. It's just so even right now between these two. And actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give us two quarts of Middlebury boat in action. It'll move them to the side, but a lot to follow as those first sets come to their conclusion. Yes. And I know I'm hopefully fortunate to have Jamie here just for a little longer. He's got to go do some coaching of his own. The deciding point goes the way of Bowden on court number one. So it's a 4-3 lead for Bradley. Yeah, it's, we're going to head over to court number three. Brooker serving for his first set. Actually, in fact, now's our moment. Here we go. I'm about to pull some funkiness on you, Jamie. We're gonna go to court three here. But here's what we're gonna do. That's right, for the first time today, we're going to the three box. It's flexing our muscles here, Jamie. We'll go double Bowden, Middlebury on the left because it's crunch time. A couple of first sets come to their conclusion. We don't wanna miss any of them. And this is where, again, I would be remiss if I did not give the biggest shout-out to super producer Daniel Westoff. He makes all of this possible here, folks. So again, you see two court sixes on your screen. Obviously, one's for Case, the other, and Staves the other Middlebury Bowden. Now Jamie McDonald about to drop off on us. Jamie, it's been a pleasure to have you here on our broadcast here this morning. You want to offer any final thoughts? D2, D3, whatever it may be. May Madness thoughts from our resident Rockhurst men's and women's tennis coach. It's all fun, man. Again, any excuse to be around college tennis is certainly a good one. So hopefully I'll be back on. Um, I've had a blast. I'll be checking these scores now that I'm, now that I'm invested in these. I've been watching them like a hawk for the last couple of hours. And uh, I certainly got to keep tabs on them. We'll see if Bruce Davis can, can keep this second set push up on some of these boards there. Looks like on six even uh, is, is a big chance for them to go up for a two break lead in the second set. So we'll see what they can do. Uh, but yeah, it's been a ton of fun. Middlebury and Bowden appearing to be quite a battle. I'm sure it will be all the way to, uh, until the end, and you'll be there to guide the listeners. So thank you for having me on, Gretzkin. We'll chat soon, and hopefully I'll see you back in this format once again very soon. Always a pleasure, buddy. You know you have a place here always, and yeah, we look forward. We'll, we'll have you back on here throughout the course of this month, so Jamie McDonald will not be a stranger. Jamie, appreciate you joining us here, but as you see, the action rolls on. Indeed it does. We'll see you guys. Yep, see you, my friend. So, set points now here for Middlebury. And you see, what have we changed up? Two Middlebury courts on your screen with Bowden. All due respect to Case. With Stavis with all those first sets done. We're going to let that match breathe a little bit over on the side. You have a couple of simultaneous set points. One of those beautiful phrases in the English language. Simultaneous set points. One for Bowden, the other for Middlebury. Meanwhile, 
I'll tell you what, it, 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 credit to the Gustavus, they have not rolled over. This is now a match on just about every court. hand go out. No, it wasn't. That was a confirmation. Excuse me, not an over. So you see the 6-3 first set to Bro Bowden's Peter Brooker. Excuse me, at the number three spot. That's one on the board. I'm going to get us to court number five here. It's another serving for the set opportunity for Middlebury. actually going to serve for the sets on courts four, five, and six as they're up five, three breaks on all three. Obviously, it's a very good set of chances. First, first set to Middlebury on five. And again, they're serving for, they'll have the chance to serve for first sets now on courts four and six. We'll put six back in your big screen. Robbie Ward with the first set at five. We're gonna take you now to four. Five, three leads for Julian Wu. Yes, Ransom Cook. I know you were looking for the double box action for Middlebury Bowden. Well, now you have it. Again, when Case gets to crunch time, if there's a world where it could be a simultaneous clinch, want to make sure we don't miss any of that action. So, of course, we'll have it for you. And maybe go to the double box then on the Case side. But for now, both sets coming to a close everywhere. It's really good tennis in Orlando. I realize I never introduced this number six matchup to see how Yuan serving here for Middlebury. Yuan 12 and 3 overall on the year. And on Evan Fortier, the senior, senior. The left Played twice this year as well, one and one in the head-to-head. -head. It's about one and one on the head-to-head -head for all of these matchups. So yeah, this is what you lock in on. Again, the bottom left of our screen is Case versus Gustavus. That's where we've got two Middlebury team members. See how you on Julian Wu closing in on first sets. I missed it by the way. Bowden with first sets on courts two and three. So we might have a three-three split here, in which case advantage Bowden. Now it's a set point, and again, actually, I wasn't looking closely enough. Given they're down two-one after doubles. Middlebury has 
nice to have these three sets at four, five, and six. We're on serve five, four at one. Bradley labor was always going to be a battle. Goes long, it's a first set to Middlebury. Head coach Andrew Thompson, an alumni of my high school. Alumnus, alumnus of my high school. Crossing the court there, as you see, 6-3-4 Middlebury on six. We'll do a full do -si do Make this court number one. Meanwhile, we'll put court number four on your big screen. It is a 5-4 hold. By the way, so again, two first sets apiece right now. Bowden first sets on courts two and three. Middlebury first sets on courts five and six. Middlebury gonna have the chance to serve for this set on court number four. We'll put court one in your big screen. Right now, Noah Labor looking to extend the set, but he's in a little bit of trouble. Love 30 here, meanwhile, Credit to Gustavus. They're up breaks in the second sets on courts four, five, and six. Now, they won the first set on three. So what does that mean? If they can take those seconds, that'll force Case to have to win at least one three set match. And that'll extend our morning session at least an additional 40 minutes. Easier said than done, of course. There is a pathway now. Meanwhile, set points, middle, uh, excuse me, Bowden. Tristan Bradley. And there it is. Six, four, first set. That's three now. For this Bowden team, they're halfway home, a long way to go. They're halfway home nonetheless, so we'll put court four in your big screen. All the first sets now underway, excuse me, now concluded. So we will go back to a little bit of a split screen here. I think Case now a little further ahead. I'm gonna make them our second and third screen. We'll move them to the side. Gotta love the fluidity, the flexibility here. All these crack brackets, cross court cast, wanna of course show you a little bit of everything so you don't miss out on anything. Old overhead from Nice and a job well done. three trying to level things once again in his second set what we're gonna do of course is put court number four Middlebury boat in your final first set in the big screen but I do want us to monitor a couple of second sets happening at case three one lead for case they take two doubles flights Eight two wins at the top two spots, then an 0-1-1 win from their anchor, James Hopper, at number one. But where are points four and five gonna come from? That's the question. Case taking five first sets, but they're down breaks in the second on courts four, five, and six, and actually, it's a set point on six. Or Rafael Costa looking to force a third against Casey Hishinuma, so shout out 
to this Gustavus team. Again, they have come roaring back. Of course, earned the upset of the tournament thus far, 5-4 over Chicago in the round of 16. Is that a set? I'm just waiting for the scoreboard to change. It is a set. With the new balls coming out, that means Costa took the second 6-1. So, we'll make that court number five as, again, looks like we'll have three set battles on courts three and six. Case about to force a third on three. Vishwa Duru, the junior, 6-3, 3-1 lead. That's looking like point number four. But the real question is, where would point five come from? Probably one of courts four and five. Question is which, if either, can case shift? Meanwhile, Julian Wu in a must-hold situation now. Bowden taking two double sets, three first sets and singles on courts one, two, and three. Middlebury can respond with a clean sweep of the bottom here, but that starts with Wu. By the way, setting three love for Bowden on two. Not too shabby. And that is the set to Julian Wu. Apologies, it's a delayed release for our sound effect there, but okay. It's clean across the board. Three first sets apiece. Bowden sweep in the top three. Middlebury getting four, five, and six. So I do want to take us to court number two, where again, it's all. Bowden right now. Let's make a little do -si do as well. We'll put Case Western back in our big screen. Alex Ruskin here. Got two more quarterfinals for you. Coming up after these are concluded. We also at the top of the hour. Gonna make a little bit of a switch. Mark Bay, the coach. Gonna come take my spot here on our D3 broadcast. I'm gonna head over to our second stream, NCAA Division I Super Regionals. Round of 16, all those matches happening today. We have all of them. I think we actually have every Division I Super Regional today on our Crack Brackets broadcast. Ex you know, they played, our super producer Daniel West off screens, not Stanford in the background. Stanford women played yesterday. So I actually legitimately, oh no, the only one we're missing is Kentucky Stanford. Good call by you, the men's side. So we have everything else, folks. And Michigan, Virginia, because there's no campus. 
turnaround for Shaw. Gets that break back. So now the pathway for Case becomes a little more clear. One, two, four. All well positioned to be straight set victories. You see the continued success of Gustavus at five. I'm gonna make court five, court two. I apologize. But Vishwa Durum, the junior, 6-3-4-1. As you see, by the way, Staples, that 6-2-3 love lead over Aiden Harris. Hmm. What did I click incorrectly there? I clicked the wrong button. Both tried to be a little too cute there. The approach was cute, the pass was cute, the volley was effective. And Shaw two points away from taking his first lead of this second set. You see bottom left of your screen, the junior Vishwa Guru. Six, three, four, one. So now if you're a Case Western fan, you start to feel it.
Here we go again. Oduru will serve for the match at two. All thoughts, if you're a Gustavus fan, towards that sophomore, Josh Christensen. He has got to extend his match if Gustavus wants to extend their season. Meanwhile, again, Aiden Harris has to find something. Bowden upsets and breaks at the number one and two spot. Now credit to Neil Epstein of Middlebury. He's flipped things at three. Up three, two on serve. I shouldn't say flipped things, but he's kept things extraordinarily competitive. Again, Bowden gonna need to win at least one second set at one, two, or three to extend this match. They did, Middlebury did sweep the bottom three courts, but Bowden sweeping the top three and taking two doubles flights. A bit of urgency now as you see Aduru begins his service game. Put point four on the board for Case. It's a de facto match point though here on court number two in Bowdoin Middlebury. Reed Staples can pretty much put this match away. And by the way, Tristan Bradley's up 6 4 4 love as well. There's a world where Middlebury's up, excuse me. Bowden's up 4-1 for a healthy amount of time. The massive hold from Anshaw for 5-4. Harris into the net, 6-2-5, love staple. So we're gonna put Duru in the big screen as he's serving for the match. Now two points away from putting Case a point away from another Division Three men's semifinal. Meanwhile, I'm going to take us over to court number one. In that Middlebury Bowden match, again, a 6-4-4 love lead for Tristan Bradley. He's serving for five love as well. 
very much like he could get there. Meanwhile, on Shaw again, holds for 6-2-5-4. He's a game away, but third set's underway now on courts 3, 5, and 6 in that Gustavus case match. The question is, did, did Gustavus just get off to too slow of a start? That would be the Stephen A. Smith take this morning on first take. They just played a slightly better first 30 minutes of double uh, singles. God, would they be right there. But there it is. 4-1 lead now for Case. And we'll take you back to the double box now. Case one point away from the victory. Anshaw can deliver it here with a break of serve. Meanwhile, you see Bradley's got a 6-4-5 love lead. Staples a 6-2-5 love lead. Those are your two matches closest to the finish line. one for a moment as I bring a second Bowden Middlebury feed to our lives. We're going to go to the triple box now. You see they're back on your screen. Courts one and two. Bowden a game away from putting two more points on the board. Meanwhile, on Shaw is two points away from sending Case Western back to the semifinals. Alex Gruskin here. What a day. What a month. May man this rolling on. And now it's a match point for Case. And Shaw can send Case Western back to the semifinals.
Alright, so that's the whole 4 4 all. I'm not sure what you guys did or didn't catch. Obviously, Case Western, 5 1 winners. Easy day at the office, I would say. Wins at the 1 and 2 spots, 8 2 and double. Straight set wins at 1, 2 and 4 singles. Case is very much looking the part of reigning national indoor champions, reigning NCAA finalists. Of course, we've had a battle here on our hands as well. Bowden, straight set wins at the number one and two singles positions. They also get wins at the number one and three double spots. Middlebury's one point coming from that number two doubles position. Now, Middlebury won first sets on courts four, five, and six, but you see here on your screen, it's all on the racket here of Neil Epstein. If Epstein cannot extend this map to, to three, Bowden's headed to the semifinals with a 5-1 win. Now, if he can, boy, do things get interesting for both of these teams. And of course, we'll have the ending of this match in its entirety for you all here on our stream. Now, we are gonna make a little bit of a switch. I'm gonna swap out, gonna go get set our Division I Super Regional coverage starting here at the top of the hour. That'll be available here on our Crack Rackets YouTube channel. The good news for all of you D3 fans, I'm handing things off to the legend, to the coach, Mark Bay, who of course has forgotten more about tennis than just about all of us will ever know. Coach Bay gonna be steering the ship here for the ending of this one, as well as our next wave of D3 men's quarterfinals. So appreciate enjoying the enthusiasm we've had in our chat. Appreciate enthusiasm the enthusiasm we've gotten from all of you in College Tennis Nation throughout the course of May Madness. We will have broadcast for you every day through the end of this 2023 College Tennis season. Team event, individual event, you name it, we'll have it. Gonna step oh, away and go commentator list for the moment, but again, gonna keep you in the three box as our coverage rolls on. You're watching our Crack Rackets coverage for 2023 Division Three. NCAA Men's Tennis Tournament. Both 4 one lead for Middlebury. Mark Bay with more coming up right after this. Come on! Let's go, boy!
Good late morning, everyone. Mark Bay now taking the handoff from Alexander the Great Gruskin. It is an amazing day at the national campus in Lake Nona, Florida. So excited to be bringing you this Division Three action. It's outstanding that Crack Rackets is now having so much coverage. We're covering in Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, all different divisions with a lot of content here. We made madness in this particular. Uh, Stands there, this ending of college tennis. Never before has college tennis had division ones, twos, and threes all in the same location competing and battling. And the synergy and just the overall camaraderie of all college tennis is happening and being showcased this morning already. Case Western getting through over Gustavus Adolphus in a pretty solid fashion. And now we've got on our hands a battle. Bowden is up 4 2. 
but Middlebury's making a push to try to take this all the way to the distance. Again, Division Three college tennis is a match to five. All three doubles matches count, of which Bowden was able to win two out of three, and then they were able to put another win on the board at the top of the position with number one, Tristan Bradley winning four and two, and then Reed Staples also winning six, two, six, one. And at number six singles, Middlebury's come back strong. With Ziao won, six, three, six, three over Evan Fortier. So we have three more matches left to go. Middlebury's in a position where they have to win all three to sweep it and win five, four from the back end. Or again, Bowden needs to win one out of these three to get over the hump and take on Case in the semis uh, that's going to be taking place on Monday. So we have three box going on here. And right now, as you can see in, in our uh, main box area, Ward from Middlebury won the first set 6-3. And now they're at the change over here. And because I just came on, I missed the last point, so I'm not sure. So, yeah, it is Ward 6365 serving for the match Middlebury which is outstanding opportunity 62 to 49 points one as you can see so in tennis the margins are actually quite slim it's it's usually 54 percent to 46 percent often in terms of the difference between a victor and a loser uh, in terms of total points it's nice that PlaySite offers that type of statistical uh, compilation as you can see that the national tennis campus has a special collegiate center and this center has 12 courts, six and six, uh, with stands in the middle that allows two simultaneous matches to be going on. And that is what is the story here at this, uh, this facility all weekend long. And we will be transitioning to level Division Three men right now to Division Two women later. And, and obviously uh, doing the same flip side tomorrow. NCAA Division One quarterfinals start on Wednesday the 17th so now we've got Ward serving for the match and he calls it just long statistically winning the first point in a closeout game is almost a 70% opportunity to win the match at all levels. So that first point, even though it just seems to be one out of four, it's huge mentally and momentum wise where that confidence and that shot in the arm, he's taking his time, adjusting his shirt, going through his rituals, bouncing the ball. 15 love. And I think all of those little things add up. That confidence, the rhythm, the routines that enabled him to take a little bit of pace off, kick the serve in and hit a first ball forehand and get his opponent moving. That's a great one-two combination, very well organized. Great start to this game. 30 love. Like that play. Second serve, return and charge into the backhand. So Bradley jumps on the return and comes forward. Gets a quick point and kind of just makes this game a little bit tighter. Ward goes back now, takes some more time. He has been taking a lot of time. There's no clock in college tennis, but I think he's getting his full 25 seconds worth. Forehand unforced error from Bradley. That brings us to match point. Ward definitely feels comfortable and confident 
and having an extended rally and it seems to be targeting the Bradley forehand here in this last little juncture of the match when you've been competing and battling for a couple of hours with your college coaches on the court helping for sure the game plan should be cemented at this stage match point he goes for the heater down the tee. So tempting always to try to finish it with a bang. But let's see what happens on this second serve. A, does he make it? B, does Bradley try to return and charge again? That's well played. Just from the screen, it appears that you know, Bradley is stepping forward, looking to move forward in the court, trying to transition from that return and charge, and then obviously that forehand return, when that forehand approach shot, rather. I, I think sometimes you get max points, and after your opponent's made a couple unforced errors, you, you tend to lay back and just see if he'll make another unforced error. But Bradley handled that moment well. But there's still two more match points. Division three college tennis taking on the no ad format this year. And there it is. The first serve goes in. Errant backhand return. Mr. Ward seals the deal. 6-3-7-5. And pushes the pressure pendulum even tighter. Now we are at 4-3 for Bowden. But Middlebury getting that point. And now we're down to the two box. It was six matches going on at the same time, but guess what? Look to the right of our screen, ladies and gentlemen. Julian Wu, two points away. Bowden serving 3-5, 15-30. Oh my goodness, he laces that. What a big forehand up the line. It's a huge shot. Building the point with a heavy cross court roll and stepping up and crushing the forehand when it matters the most. It is closing time and there is an amazing adrenaline flowing through the veins of all the Middlebury players. As you start getting some of that momentum, the whole team feels the comeback is imminent. Match point. Nice job saving that match point. Mark Nice is serving here at 30-40. Lost the first set 6-4, down 3-5, 30-40, back against the wall. Oh no, Julian Wu is in winning position, but the lob sat up just long enough for him to get tight and think about it. He let the overhead point of contact drop too low, got tentative, and if anybody, most of these guys probably know it, there's something called acceleration due to gravity. You learn it in physics. That lob came down crashing on him and he shanked it wide. Oh dear. No ad, deciding point, still match point for Middlebury. And there it is. He absolutely tempts fate and takes the forehand approach shot and comes in again. But the lob from Nice goes wide. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a match. It is four all. We're going down to the nitty gritty. Case Western gets it done easily. 
But this last match is going all the way to the wire. And guess what? Bowden had won the first set, and it was a tight nip and tuck second set that was won by Epstein for Middlebury. But as all of these extra matches have just unfolded, you never know if it's going to come down to you. And guess what? It has come down to this. Number three singles. And Mr. Epstein wrote the wave of winning and closing out that second set and is up 302 breaks serving in the deciding third set of the deciding match. and the feeling in a player's mind when they know that the match can come down to them. In tennis, the beauty of the sport for the collegiate level is that you are playing for something bigger than yourself. The weight. Didn't do enough with the approach shot. Nice passing shot from Bruker. Getting a little confused there because the last ball was long, but oh, it it's tough, but both both teams are. Wearing the white shirts. I think just our our our, our score uh, is correct, but I think the serving is off. I think Epstein from Middlebury is actually receiving. Yeah, it's break point. I just think our little blue dot's on the wrong spot. Yeah, and that. Guess we're here at a deciding point. I'll be able to sort this out here after this point. My apologies. So it, it 
the the score bug I think is is incorrect. I think that on the near side, Epstein of Middlebury is serving up for love. I just think that our blue dot for the for the server is incorrect. The score is correct. Epstein serving at the bottom of the screen, up for love. The little insignia on his shirt is is the is the Middlebury's uh, logo. So it is Middlebury serving on the bottom of our screen, up for love. In the final set. difficult sometimes when you have a big lead like this but there's so much momentum associated with every single point in every game so you need to please your mind by taking the pressure off of every single point is so paramount so every second serve even is extra pressure Love 40. Chance for Bruker to get on the board and try to start mounting what would be a necessary comeback for Bowden. And that's a step in the right direction. Still in one game. Just like Middlebury coming back from 4 1 down to 4 all. You have to start someplace and start building. The teams will switch. So they are always cheering on the adjacent court, standing on the center line. That's the proper collegiate support etiquette from the side. Beautiful day. Temperatures definitely in the middle 80s. It's warm out there. It's where all the nutrition and the hydration and the support staff, snack bags, all comes into play. Rose just joining us. Alex Gruskin started the day and he's shifting over to the Division One stream. I'm Mark Bay, your host here. Case Western over Gustavus Adolphus and our opener. This is also part of the 9 a.m. round. Coming up soon, Tufts versus Emory. And Claremont McKenna taking on Wash U. Great point. It appears that there's some wind that's blowing from the other side. So right now Epstein has the wind at his back, it appears. Bruker serving against the wind. Again, our little blue dot is incorrect. So our little blue dot is in the wrong spot. It is Bruker from Bowden serving 1-4.
put up 30 love. He has an 04. And at this point, it's 63 points a piece. But there's one of the tricks in math and statistics on the scoreboard. For sure, that is a Middlebury favorable scoreboard to be 63 points off. Nice return there. And with the wind behind him, a driving forehand from Epstein. Strike zone, he does a very good job of it. A lot riding on this point now. 1 4, 30 all. And that is great for him back behind. I love that play. Later in sets and later in matches, when you've been going to the open court often, it's nice to play back behind players. Every single game and point. Guys are cheering like crazy. Oh, it's called long. And as you see in that point, there was a let. Let's as well as no ad tennis are new additions to the division three format the scoring format most certainly is still unique division one and two are playing a best of seven point match where we play a best of five match here all three doubles matches count for a point in the beginning so that's why we're at the four all team score deciding point Thickening. A hope from Bowden. And Rupert is looking much better after winning two games. And that's why I just, those first couple of points at 4 Love looked a little disinterested. Not disinterested, that's probably not a fair word. But. On our left, you're starting to see the doubles point from the Tufts and Emory match. Court one and court two. Gonna set the stage there in one second. Let's see what happens here. Epstein. Doing a quick job of getting himself ahead 40 love in this game.
the wind at his back and the big first serve and the big forehand. He gets himself a quick hold and now will come against the wind with Bruker serving to stay in the match at 2-5. What a comeback by Middlebury. It just shows you why every single match is so precious and you have to take good care of your own court. Over on the left of our screen at the top, we've got Tufts. Car glue and Vusanovic taking on Glanville and James. Tufts already with a quick break at one. The nice thing about the Division Three format is that it's a pro set to eight. So it's a little bit longer, a little bit more extended doubles product. So we will have plenty of opportunity to catch up with that action. It's nice to see if we can close out this match on the other side. And here comes Bruker back against the wall playing some quality tennis so far what i'm seeing is that the top of our screen most certainly has the wind at their back and that player is a bit uh in the driver's seat of the points and should probably be getting more short balls and coming forward wide. Bruker, 30 love. And free point on the serve. 40 love. Bowden, just have to do your job here. You have to take good care of your serve and put the pressure back on Epstein to try to close it out against the win, which will not be as easy. Plays the return inside in. I can't say I like that mistake, but that's why I'm in the booth and why they're playing. Definitely an advantage in the collegiate format. Coaches can sneak over and just give their players a little feedback before the game starts just to set. Almost like a 20 second timeout. Epstein serving for the match. And he starts it with a dreaded DF. Mmm. It's a great ball. 
he does an outstanding job at this. And his strikes are on his forehand, and he can be settled and go forward. He has all the right in the world to go for the up the lines. I mean, he's missed a few here and there, but when he's in rhythm and with his weight moving forward, most certainly Mr. Epstein has got a formidable forehand weapon to use. He's going to need it. 15 all. And another D. A bull. Oh, my goodness. It's just. It's not what the doctor ordered. Unless you're Mr. Brooker from Bowdoin. Then you're quite happy. 30, 15, 15, 30, excuse me. Deeper in the court, trying to change direction on a flatter down the line backhand. After two double faults, this is this is a really tight game. Three gifts, four break points for Mr. Bruker. And there is one erased. be nice to just go Kyrgios or Isner style and hit two big ones and shake hands, but live by the sword, die by the sword. He keeps going for it. And that goes long. And this is still up for grabs, ladies and gentlemen. Bruker from Bowden breaks. That's a lot of alliteration there. And now we're shifting back over on this changeover. A car globe. Luksanovich from Tufts up three love. On Glanville and James. Tufts and Emery, just a high powered battle this year. You know, it's just so difficult with this Division Three as you may or may not know that they don't really see the teams in, in a national championship like this actually but it feels like case western and, and tufts may be the the one and two in this event with a whole bunch of closeness and parity just underneath Ironically, the only loss, I think, on tough season might be Middlebury this year. Opportunity to try to steal a break back. Actually, now it is for love. 
for Tufts, commanding two break lead at number one doubles. Not sure what's going on in the singles match. Maybe someone's taking an injury timeout over there. But Tufts here in the big box on the near side of the screen serving. Back to live action here. Again, our little blue score bug, uh, server dot is incorrect. This is Rooker serving four five in the third. But he is now against the wind and this is a bit of a mother nature battle it appears because Rooker was able to win both games from five two down at the top of the screen. And the game, the first game that Epstein gave back was at four love, where he was also against the wind. So it seems to be a challenge, person on this bottom of our screen being able to hold. It's an overrule. That's a big moment. Thinking that it's 30 off. And instead it is 15 all. Not sure if there were other overrules in this match. Alex Gruskin was on the earlier end of this call. No. Finishing for him. That's a big, aggressive second serve return. Love it because it's to a safe cross court target. Obviously, he's not happy about the call. He wants to show some aggression there, but he did a, I think, a smart job of where he selected his location. 15 30. the return pulls back and up it's not a good body language on the return great forehand and the great forehand body serve by Brooker and now 30 all hold on to your seats goodness wait a minute oh wow I think Epstein called the ball long before he missed long so I think this is a match point for Epstein yes that's correct he called it out before it appeared that his shot went long so referee agreed match point Middlebury And he lights it up and he hits it. 
And there's the, here's the team piling on. Pandemonium out there. Court number three. Oh, what a match. What a way to finish. What a way to end. It doesn't get any closer than that, folks. 5-4. Middlebury. In dramatic fashion comes back. And beats Bowden 5-4. That in Division One, in Division Two, it's a four-three match. In Division Three, it's a five-four match, which is the absolute bottom of the ninth inning, late fourth quarter heroics. And there it is. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Mr. Epstein gets it done over the finish line. So now we can focus 100% on the Tufts and Emory battle. Current situation. Tufts up 4-2 at number one doubles. Emory is up 3-2 at number two doubles. Tufts up 4-1 at number three. We've got them all now in the three box. Emory on the near side. Tufts on the far side. Got a break point. Often you see against a big server, you play both back, but then switch to standard formation after the fault. And there it is, double break. Emery back on serve at number one doubles. After being down two breaks in this match. Shifting over to court number two. Andrew Esses. John Lasanajuk. Taking on Josh Belandres. Rishabh Chandra. Emery up 3-2. 40 love. Again, I something's going on with the little play site uh, blue dot on our screen because yeah, Tufts is Tufts is the team at the top of the screen that's serving and Emery's here at, at the bottom of the screen okay so now that's correct Emery is up for two a break serving here at number two doubles. Off the eye formation, trying to get a touch. It's 
just wasn't able to do enough with the ball. Love 15. A little traditional serving volley. Got to love that. Build on the wall. Classic textbook doubles there. There is a lot of doubles now played at a high level where some players do choose to stay back and rip ground strokes and set up their partner with more ground stroke oriented ripping. But it is nice to see the traditional classic way of serve volleying. And after you execute a couple of those and you run some high formations and make some some tough follies, you can actually draw returns like, uh, like he just did their re return errors because there's a respect for the caliber of the volley airing in the net game. So the returners feel like they have to do even more. And, and sometimes that causes the mistakes that you saw there. Well done. It's just a conversation going on that there's going to be low volleying and, and those volleys maybe not have the same amount of punch and sting then those can be poached outstanding job by tufts crossing there taking advantage of the high volley Big time ground strokes. Those balls are dipping below the net. It looks like, oh, he's just missing volleys, but the weight of that shot, you don't you don't feel that on a computer screen. That forehand was crushed. Thirty forty. Oh wow. See, originally, I was going to question why they would go standard formation again and not run the eye. And then after a great return, an even better up-the-line reply, respecting the fact that a post could have been imminent. And this is a big moment for this match. 4-3 versus 5-2 is a substantial lead for Emery. Second serve. Yeah, I, I feel like they just kept going after the low backhand volley and I think that there should have been some scheming to, to get away from that. There should have probably been a poach called. The match is tightening up everywhere. Let's go over to doubles three. Shaw and Sam Dean for Emery. Alex Gonchev and Jack Moldenhauer. And Tufts is doing the job. They are hitting big, crossing. Again, Tufts in the white blue. Well 
well done. So many little decisions and play calls that have to happen in a doubles match. Often the players have the responsibility of doing that on their own, but it is nice to have a little coach input. High formation, a little deeper in the box. Oh, it's a great point. It's good tennis. I really am enjoying the caliber. Doubles is, is just a different aspect of the singles game. So many unique skills that sometimes are not actually prevalent in a singles match. And then sometimes the actual double skills rounds out. The singles transition and finishing. Good kick serve into the body. Emery down 2-5, but trying to hang tough and keep this score tight. Again, we don't play the six, we play the eight. Division three format. It's a pro set. Five, four toughs at number one doubles. Four, three, Emery at number two. And there's been some double faulting going on out here today at the campus. Good lob choice, good mix, good closing. Emory's going to have to figure out how to solve it. Going both back here. Serving to the ad side. He chooses to go for the lob, but it's not good enough. And it gets put away. 5 3-0. It's a great point. Sorry, screen. Throws just there for one second. I like the pro set. I, I feel that sometimes in the Division One and Division Two formats, the, the doubles can, can go by so quickly. Yesterday in the USC Michigan match, I think it was barely 25 minutes long. This gives the players a little bit more time to compete and develop crucial skills. Yep, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, let's go, go. 
Emery up 30 love here trying to get back on serve at number three. Meanwhile, on the other two positions, six, five toughs at one, four all at two. Great body serve into the forehand. And for those interested in WashU versus CMS, that most certainly will be coming up shortly. The Middlebury Bowden match carried a little longer, and the other teams have to have sufficient warm up time on the other side. And the beauty of having two banks of six simultaneous dual matches going on all day long. on this doubles. I, I like the, the poaching and the pinching and the faking. And sometimes it's not necessarily that the coach's play call is better than the players. Sometimes it's just the execution and how people handle the moment. 1540. And Marie breaks back. And now switching back over to court number one. Tufts had a big lead to start this. Really big leads at one and three. That have dissolved. Now it's 40-15. Emery, Glanville, and James. Serving 5-6, up 40-15 at the top of your screen. Car glue. Luxanovich of Tufts at the bottom. Oh, Terry, that's so caught. It does happen. You're looking to get involved, but the ball comes at you at such an angle that your positioning handcuffs you. Not by design, by accident. That's what you want. You want him in the middle of the court trying to take as, as many possible volleys as he can as the, as the up man. You want touches and participation, not spectating. goes missing into the net he stayed home so there wasn't a lot of space to find that up the line sometimes you've got to be a mind reader with those down the line ground strokes six all 15 all getting to the business end of this pro set missed it
Uh, it's not match point yet. That's a mistake. Those longs. So this is triple break point for Emery, who were down big. 3 0, 4 1, and now a chance to serve for the match. But not that time. Textbook body serve with the partner looking to get involved. Exactly the way you need to do it in high level doubles. And on free point, just taking a page out of some of the singles matches that we recently just watched. Getting a high percentage of first serves and transfers pressure. It transfers pressure to the other side of the net. See what they run here. The siding point. And good activity from the net guy and Tufts. Looked like they were in a bit of trouble that game. Find a way to steal a hold and keep the scoreboard in their favor. Back to number two. But different doubles matches can sometimes move at, at different speeds. And I liken it to how a baseball game can go quicker or longer. It just depends on how many first serves I think are made. And in some instances, if uh, players are looking to serve volley versus stay back and have rallies. Oh, you got to love that. There's no such thing as yours and mine. It is any ball floating is the net, guys. I love that. A lot of times players will see a ball floating and they'll just say yours and let it go by. And if it's up in the air like that, you have a much easier ability to angle it and put it away if you just go take it. I like the fortune favoring the bold mentality by Tufts on that point. Five all, 30 love. There's some good net play, some first serves. This is the recipe for some doubles holds. That's the type of day we're gonna have. The level is so close, the margins are so slim. Well done.
Great hold by Tufts to go 6 5. Back over to one. Landville and James serving up 40 15. And there's the free point. Deciding tiebreaker for number one doubles. Emory up one love. It's close everywhere. That's so good. Quality of the backhand, the depth and precision of that sets up a mediocre reply that is coach bait. And that was, I wish all that play in junior tennis could watch that point because the key to being successful in doubles, I think, is to have a great backhand volley that you can hit down the middle. Not a lot of people have that. The forehand volley most people have, big forehand, decent serve, but that backhand volley, and you may really being able to place that well, I think that's a big separator of good to great. Tufts now with a commanding 4-1 lead. Emory needs to figure this out. This is no, no uh, mystery or surprise about being in the quarterfinals of Division Three. Coach Browning, well over two decades worth of being in the quarters. The championships in 2019 and 2021. Great for him. Again, University of Chicago. Gets the title on the men's side last year. But it was Emory in 2019 and 2021. So Coach Brownie has a lot of experience at tournament time. It's getting really close on all the other courts as well. We're gonna keep our eye on court number two. Where Tufts is up 7-5, but Emory is up 40-15 in that game. We'll keep our eye out. Tufts is making a little bit of a move.
That is outstanding. And I love how as he was getting ready to rip the ground stroke, his partner ran up. In the Wayne Bryan, Bryan brother playbook, that's called dual quad attack. Definitely learned that one over the years. Congratulations to Mike and Bob Bryan, who will be inducted into the Collegiate Hall of Fame on May 21st, coming up here. Big proponent of doubles, and they've been watching some of the coverage already. They'll be tuning in to watch Stanford. Five two toughs. Great hands, good coverage. Six two double fault. Never a good time. And there it is. T U F T S. T U F T S. The win at number one doubles. Let's shift over to number three doubles. Got a little two box here. Tufts already up one zero as you can see. Seven five thirty all on the left. Seven six fifteen all on the right. With an opportunity to go up three love. So important in a match to five to get the third doubles point instead of having to get go two one where you have to split the singles. So these are critical moments for this duel. Tufts is getting it going. 7 6 40 15 match point position two. And that was called long. The return just missed. The guys have hugged. Tufts to love. And this was a match point that they just had at 40-30 to go three love, but they missed. And now they need to problem solve, talk it over. Deciding point, match point. I formation goes for the T. I love the eye, but I hate when they miss the serve in the eye. Yeah. 
And it goes long. Emery guesses right on the return off of the eye. I just, I hate when they go for the eye and they overserve the target. It's so important to hit the target some way, shape, or form. Momentum shifts, and now Emery has a chance to hang in here. It may only seem like one pro set, but in the overall outlook of a Division Three men's match, 2-1 and 3-love is enormous. Well, our other match on the other two courts has started. We got CMS taking on Wash U. Wash U at the top of the screen serving O2. See what happens back on the other side. We'll definitely keep an eye on this Wash U and CMX. They're just getting underway. And again, it's eight game pro set. So we will certainly will be able to bring you a lot of action from each of those courts. Almost a little bit of an advantage for us on the broadcast to have these matches slightly staggered so we can get all of the doubles action going. Really show you a ton of toughs and mill excuse me, of, of, of Tufts and Emery and we're able to finish that dramatic Middlebury Bowden match. Again, for those just joining in, Coach Mark Bay taking over the reins from Alexander the Great Gruskin. Case Western, already on a win. Middlebury, dramatic come from behind win. And now we need to figure out the rest of the punch card for Monday. Tufts versus Emery. And Claremont McKenna against Washu. Taking a look in our big box right now. Tufts up 7 6, receiving here at the top of the screen. Dean and Shaw serving here at Love 30. There's trouble. That goes long. Three points are so valuable. I like that. I like that cutter into the body. Such an underrated serve. Yes. One, two, three for serves. One, two, three points in a row. Division three playing a best of five format. All three of these doubles matches count. And there it is, forces a tiebreaker. What a great job coming back from Love 40 down. But with first serves and net play like that, I'm not surprised. This was a Division I format. These guys would already be playing singles or cheering. Only in Division Three. In a national championship, will they play longer? Oh. 
Oh, what a point. the communication and as you see this little cover the mouth and talk often that's done because there could be fans cheering in the stands that could be giving some of the signals away so sometimes that's a way to communicate instead of always using the signals that could be transferred to someone else like if someone was right behind here they could be giving the tough guys some signals i mean i know that sounds a little shady but things have definitely happened like that in the past so Oh, this is some ball. Emery, these guys have caught fire at a crucial time. Saving match point and now in a dominant position here to start this breaker. Wow, 2-1 to 3-0 is such a big difference. Way to stop the bleeding. Hex look backhand return. Good balance. Caught it early. Hit it with interest. Tufts back in business. Gets the mini break. One, two. Now serving at the top of your screen. And that is one great effort. He races the two lovely in his back with their nose out in front. There's so much on this breaker. Just an accidental flea flicker push up in the air, but it works to perfection. And now from 2-0 down, Tufts goes 4-2 up on the other side of the, of the Lake Nona River with the other competition going on. Scoring update, 3-1. For Claremont McKenna at number one doubles, three two at number two doubles for Wash U, and five love at number three doubles for Claremont. We'll stay here on the main box until we close out this breaker. And then we'll probably take a shift over to number three doubles, which is moving much quicker than the others. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't tell if that was intentional or that was a shank accident, but... It is on the blue, and it is a point for Tufts, and now a commanding 5-2 lead, the potential to go up 3-love in this quarterfinal.
Bingo. That is outstanding. And that's the way you play at closing time. Game set and a commanding three love lead on a race to five for Tufts. T U F T S. Three love. Coach Browning is going to have to rally with the troops now. This is an important, it's probably going to have to be a Vince Lombardi type of speech getting ready for singles because now you've got to win five out of six singles. That is tough math. Okay. Flipping over to our other match. Let's get uh, court three actually after this deciding point uh, in the big box. So let's watch this deciding point and then switch to doubles three because they, they, they've moved along so far. Deciding point here. Wash you serving up 3-2, bottom of your screen. Claremont McKenna makes it easy with the yellow and orange shirts. Gutsy, 4-2 for Emery there. But in this court, things have not been complete. They've not been competitive. It's been quite a blowout so far. Rito and Fam going against Scruggs and Garcia Muro. Marito's a freshman and he has been dominating, having an amazing year. And I think sometimes when you have a, a number one player that plays in the three doubles position, they can sometimes take over a match.
And for those just tuning in, Case Western, 4-1. Middlebury, exciting, 5-4. Tufts on the other side, up 3-0. And you're looking at the three box. Claremont McKenna commanding seven love lead here at number three. Claremont McKenna up 4-1, deciding point at one and 4-3. For Wash U at number two. But the difference between 2 1 and, and 3 Love, as we just discussed on the other side, is, is, is enormous. Often in a Division I or Division II format, if you lose the doubles point, you can win four out of six singles and win. But in Division Three, if you lose all three doubles, you have to win five out of six singles. That's even harder to do. Makes this format so compelling. Coaches seem to like this one. They have made some adjustments and they've added no ad scoring and they've also added let's. So they're playing let's and no ad. So there's a lot of similarities between one, two, and three now, but this particular scoring aspect is, is still a, most certainly a difference. Back to number three. Claremont McKenna on the near side, serving seven love. Fam, serving. Oh, what a pass. Great job work in the middle. Love to see competent doubles teams inside the service box building a wall. When it's a two up, two back scenario, it's much better for you to volley through the middle as you just saw, and then go into the outsides when you have a ball to put away. Opening up angles sometimes is not the right idea unless it's a ball you can put away. Fam serving. Seven love. 15 all. And these guys look young. They're, they're freshmen. They are definitely new to college tennis, but they're well trained. They most certainly are doing a great job of, of hitting their volleys. Oh, he made a late break. Just split step was a little off. Wasn't as explosive as he needed to be for that ball. I think with his serve position, I, I prefer him to not stand so far wide. Uh, I'd love Fam to move in a little bit more from his serve position. I think it's a little harder, especially on the second serve for him to spot the tee. It's, I mean, his opponent can find the forehand a little easier on the second serve, but that one sails long. They're still in this game. Let's see if they can climb their way out of it. Position one, five, two for Claremont. Position two, five, three for Wash U. Great work there. The, the composure and the poise of these young freshmen. I'm impressed.
and then it's such a great effort to come back from Love 40 and close out the game and close out the match. Put the first point on the board for Claremont McKenna, the freshman. Number three doubles. Get it done. of the two box wash you claremont and now it is one love for claremont mckenna on the right of your screen wash you up five three thirty love receiving at the top of your screen on the left screen claremont mckenna up five two thirty fifteen so on pace right now One pays for for two one after doubles. Sorry, because uh, the the play site system is used to a normal D one match that's going to six, so that's why the screens are saying match point. Apologies for that. Division three is the only uniqueness that goes to eight, so. These sets are going beyond six. And CMS is going up. Six two at number one. Again, apologies, the, the play site is used to a six-game set, so it's providing some stats for you right now. But this is an eight-game set, eight-game pro set, rather. Oh, this volleying, the volleying from Claremont McKenna, guys. The little freshman did a great job at three, and now... I'm watching this just this great technique and court position at all three double spots for them. Great move in number one doubles there, putting pressure on the volleyer. I call that a little bit of a pinch. Robinson and Settles, Coach Paul Settles' son playing in the number one double spot. Goes up 6-3 at number two. Again, we're going to be bringing you the singles from the Tufts match here shortly. We just had to watch a dramatic doubles point ending for Tufts. So it's just nice to, to spend some time here with the Wash U and Claremont McKenna doubles as well. Trying to keep it fair and equitable here at Crack Rackets. So much coverage all throughout the division one, two, and three championships. Covers division one, first and second rounds. Been covering this weekend, obviously, division two, three, and one. Alex Gruskin on the division one feed right now, as we speak, and Coach Mark Bay here calling division three men and division two women later. Alex started the day and on the middle of the day, and Alex will come back in and back clean up and finish.
6-3. Claremont McKenna on the left. 6-3. Wash U on the right. Robinson and settles 16 and 5 on the year. Win and Rama ready. 14 and 8 on the year. Guys are battling hard out here. Really appreciate how much serve volleying players are looking to do. Great returns. Six four for Wash U. And number two doubles. Six three for Claremont McKenna at number one. Again, going to eight in a pro set. Big return at number two. Great first volley pickup. Skill levels high. This is just college tennis. That's one of the great aspects, credit to the ITA and Tim Russell and the whole group that's had this brainchild of having all three of the levels showcased at one time. I'm just watching great tennis. I'm not able to figure out who's one, who's two, and who's three right now. It's just been great tennis all around. Deciding point at number one doubles. Big moment. That's Coach Settles in the bucket hat giving some instructions. Was there an overrule? There was an overrule. The volley was called long by Wash U, but the referee overruled it on a deciding point. That is enormous. 90% of life is timing. That is great timing for Claremont McKenna. Commanding 7-3 lead now at number one doubles.
A game point for Washu. So that makes them 7 4. They're one game away. And here at position one, 7 3, Claremont McKenna. Bingo. It's nice to have that lefty-righty combination in dubs. And match point. What a return. Just pure smoke coming off of the lefty. Wow. Game, set, match. Claremont McKenna giving them a two-love lead in this quarterfinal. And now, Wash U trying to serve it out. Singh and Yamamoto, only nine and seven on the year. But Freer and Schilling don't have as many matches under their belt, only three and two together. Great close. Like I've been saying all day, the, the technique, the volley skills, the movement, well-trained collegiate athletes. And doubles is doubles, people. Doubles is doubles. You have to have the right skills and do the right things. My formation, body serve, great choice, free point on the serve, good coverage. This is a great doubles product. Game, set, match, Wash U. Eight games to four. That makes it 2-1 after this doubles point. On the other side, Tufts is three love ahead. And earlier today, Case Western 4-1 over Gustavus and Middlebury 5-4. Excuse me, uh, Case Western 5-1 over Gustavus and Middlebury 5-4 over Bowden. We're going to be, after a very short break, taking a look at singles one, two, and three on the Tufts and Emory match. Back to you in a minute.
Okay. Division three, USTA National Campus. Coach Mark Bay on the helm. Alex Gruskin on the D1 feed. And we're bringing you this D3 action for the first time. So excited. Divisions one, two, and three, all playing at the same location in Lake Nona. And all this action and content on crack rackets primarily at NCAA.com and then obviously a little tennis channel for the main division one semis and finals so all of this action from first ball to last may madness we are now into the singles portion of our last two men's quarterfinals of division three earlier today case western 5-1 over gustavus adolphus middlebury in exciting fashion 5-4 coming back after being 4-1 down against bowden and here we are showing you the singles of the Tufts and Emory matchup. Right now in the big box, we've got number one singles for Tufts. Rishab Sharda, senior from India, taking on Andrew Esses from Houston, Texas, who's also a senior. Sharda, top of your screen. Esses on the near side. Three all, and that was the deciding point. That's 4-3 for Sharda on serve in the first set. Take a peek at court number two. Just want to go down the line, and introduce you to all these players. Position one, Sharda and Esses. <laughs> Emory's teams fairly even. Not necessarily as tough at the very top of the lineup, but just very even and deep all the way throughout. Eight and seven at the number one position. So Essis has obviously had some challenges battling, but as you move through the lineup, it goes 16 and four, 17 and four, 16 and two. So clearly that middle of the lineup is where their strength is. Essis top of the screen serving three, four. Good serve, big forehand, misses the mark. Dictating, getting control of time and space. Sneaking in the volley, the float is out of the air. That level of tennis most certainly puts you in the conversation at the top of the lineups. And Tufts is up three love. Dual match, they only need to win. Two singles matches to close this out. A 
but Emory's fighting back. Emory has a lot of positive scoreboard momentum at other positions. And at the bottom of our screen, it, it should be 2-1. Claremont McKenna is 2-1 ahead over Wash U after doubles. Their singles are just getting underway. At this point, Tufts only has two favorable scoreboards. First sets are done, but Emory is ahead on four scoreboards and actually has one first set. Charter, go on 5-3. Quick play. Break point erased. been an approach shot didn't seem to be that great of an approach shot but because it stayed so low Sharda couldn't get under it and he nets it he's about a half a step too far away from the ball just misjudged it so now 5-3 to serve for the set versus 4 all back on serve the swings that no ad tennis can provide in a, in a college dual match is such a roller coaster ride Luckily, I'm a roller coaster guy, so I'm ready all day for these. Deuce, deciding point. And we do play Let's as well in Division Three College Tennis now. And there's a double fault, and there's a celebration. I don't know that he should be having that big of a celebration but there's a lot of emotions flowing through the veins of these young men and everyone gets pumped up so now shard up from tufts will serve for the first set here at number one we want to try to get your looks on all these different courts we're going to shift over to court number two dean kamenev hensdale illinois from chi town area my neck of the woods Actually just actually just held serve. He actually just held serve to win the first set 6-3. So he gives Emery. We'll come back to this one. Let's shift over to uh, court number six. Some of these Matches are going right into a changeover, so it's a little hard to go down the line. One, two, three, four. But let's go over to court six. This is a, an important one. Oh, 
Hoffs puts in Andre Jokic, who's three and one on the season. Lots of other guys have played a lot more tennis, but he's the choice today at six. And William Coop, who's six and three on the season for Emory, is playing. So maybe there's a little bit of of lineup uh, of matchup and lineup shifting. Each team trying to anticipate who they're going to put in this position. So these are the guys that numbers have been called. Definitely didn't have his legs under it. He hit a bunch of great forehands in a row. Big time inside in forehand. What a shot. Tufts wearing the baby blue shorts and Emery wearing the black shorts with the white shirts. Deciding point. Trey Jokic taking on William Coop. Tough to see when that ball was in or out. I'm, I'm a little unsure on the call. 5 4 Emery. But it was wide. Emery is. This is starting to smell like the Middlebury and Bowden match. But Tufts up three love after doubles, only needing two singles. Sometimes there could be an emotional letdown relative to that. Let's shift over to court number three, please. Position three. Alex Gonchev versus Nolan Shaw. Shaw, junior from New Jersey. Doncha, freshman from Bulgaria.
falling off the return. I'd much rather like to see the, the players load their legs and go forward. I like the Jimmy Connors, Andre Agassi, Monica Sellis, Djokovic school of returning, simple outside leg and trans for the weight forward. The falling backwards and hitting the high heavy stuff, maybe if I'm the doll on clay or Medvedev in a hardcore match at the tarp, but I think simple returning is better going forward. I think he heard me, he did better there, got the ball in play. Just simplifies things. Deep up the middle, neutralizing the server. That's really the number one job of a returner. Oh, it was in there. Love the tennis from Shaw, though. Stepping up and dictating with the forehand, playing inside the court. Controlling the center. Just snuck in and took the swing volley out of the air, but underplayed it. And Ganchev, obviously, was able to run it down, but he's also lefty, so it's his forehand. Great job. Seems like he's found a nice little rhythm. A lot of repetition and balls that you have to hit to get to the position where you can trust your game and you can just play fluid. One of the greats in coaching, Dennis Vandermeer told me once when I was a young coach, one of the hardest things to do is to be consciously unconscious as a tennis player. Be able to play with intent, have purpose, but to be automatic and trust your shots over and over and over. And I just jinxed him on the double fault. Now here's an opportunity. Shaw trying to serve for the set, but looks like there's a great point chance for Ganchev. Just it long. Deuce. Deciding point. Break point. And set point. Oh, what a shot. He is pumped. The ball was almost behind him. And he was able to right the ship athletically. It's a great job hanging in there. Let's go back to position two. In position one, the number one singles, Sharda did close out that first set, 6-3. But right now, that's the only scoreboard where Tufts is officially leading. Dean Kamenev, Hinsdale, Illinois, freshman, 11 and 1 in duel, 16 and 4 overall. Vuk Vuksanovic, sophomore from Montenegro, 7 and 6 on the season.
buddy from Hinsdale is sniopping. That's Chicago language from high school tennis, from his high school tennis days at Hinsdale Central. So again, right now, Emory needs to win five out of six. And they currently have two first sets and they're up five, four, and two others. Big time forehand. Minev for sure has been crushing his forehand all match. The backhand is where he's been a little bit more vulnerable. Luxanovic is looking around. I tell you, I I don't know what I would do as a philosophy if I was a collegiate coach. Because looking around sometimes can distract you and you start feeling the momentum of the positive momentum if your teammates are doing well, but right now, possibly the negative momentum of a lot of the tough players being behind in the scoreboards. And that goes long. And Tufts only needs two. But they're only leading in one. After this point, let's switch over to court number five. Looks like we may be getting close to a set point. Over court number five, Gonzalez and Van, and Van Cotham. Gonzalez, a freshman from Spain. Van Cotham, a sophomore. Florida. And there's the first set. Emilio over and caught them. And now at position three. Shot. Gets a set for Emory. So Emory now has first sets at positions two, three, four, and five. Let's go over to four. This is the one that's moving the quickest right now. And this match has Charlie James, grad senior from Atlanta, Georgia, who's a transfer. Came over from St. John's and he's been lights out. 16 and two. And he's continuing to do the damage here.
Big player, big server, big aggressive game. Taking a look at him there. He looks like he means business. And that's the thing. After you, you're down in doubles, you need someone to put a singles win on the board quickly. Try to shift the momentum and take away some of the scoreboard pressure in a duel. Charlie's doing just that. Car glue, sophomore from England, 13 and 0 in the season. Looks like he may be possibly putting a breadstick on that record. Because Charlie James is on a mission. Again, just trying to give you a little bit of a feel for this Tufts and Emory match that may end up coming down to the wire. We'll be taking you to Wash U and Claremont McKenna shortly. Just wide. Doesn't really do a great job of getting underneath that backhand. He's a tall guy, so he could possibly have some challenges on the move. James now serving 6 3 4 2. Keeping an eye on number six singles because if Jokic has the opportunity to close out the set, we may want to switch to that. We'll keep an eye on that. Right now, we'll stay at four. Great shot. James has just been doing such a great job on the big serve, big forehand that I don't, I mean, just looking at him, he looks rather calm. Looks, just seems rather confident that he's going to be able to hold serve over and over again. Big serve, opportunity, forehand with time. Yeah, he, he's got this dialed up now. His head on backwards is even so high. I, I'm a head on backwards guy. His is so high, I feel like it might fall off, but he's got it under control, just like the serve in the forehand. Break point. It's game point here. Missing that. Oh, a second serve, serve and volley. And a shoelace volley on like nobody's business. Are you kidding me? He made that look like he was meant to do it, like he does it all the time. Mr. James, he's smiling now, he's loving that. Let's switch over to court six, see if we can catch the end of probably the most important match in this duel now. Sharda has a 6-3-3 love victory, court six, I'm sorry. Coming back to four. 
I was hoping we could catch court six because it's six five for Jokic. Six five for Jokic. That point so crucial because Tufts needs two positions. And Sharda at one seems to be in good position at 6 3 3 love, and this is the only other favorable scoreboard. Oh, he misses the back end into the net. That was T I G H T. Deciding point, break point, set point. Lots of different dynamics in this single point. And he gets it. Oh, the concentration. Out wide like that's not that easy of a ball when you're in the alley and you have to hit it on a straight line. But he settled in and took good care of that business. Wow. That was a big moment for this duel. Let's go back to position four. See if Charlie James can close the door. Great shot. Charlie James, two points away. 11 and 0 in duels, 16 and 2 overall. Seems like he's not finishing that backhand. He's kind of he's kind of shovel guiding it, for lack of a better term. He has such a confidence and a dominance on the forehand and serve side of things. Just gotta make sure that he hits those rally balls. Good pressure. Nice hold. A cargo. Carglue, sophomore from England, has not lost, so he's got some pride. He does not want to be the first one off the court here today. Oh, he missed it. Close dual match. 
to see if James can win this match. And we're going to be taking you over to Claremont and Wash U. Unbelievable scoreboards on the Claremont McKenna and Washu match 5 4 on every single scoreboard except for one. It's a big serve coming from James. There's the heat. Closing time. Match point. Big serve. Game, set, match. He throws up the hat that wasn't on his head that tight. Charlie James, grad senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Transfer from St. John's. Gets the job done. Gets Emory on the board. Huge. We got a match now. Emory most certainly has made the presence known. Tufts is in the driver's seat, but Emory's on their heels. We're going to take a second now to shift over to the other side of the courts. Let's go to position one, Claremont McKenna. Versus Wash U. It's just almost going to be set points everywhere. It's going to be impossible to catch this. The simultaneous nature of college tennis is such. That's the way it goes. Washu already has his first set at 6-4 in position two. Claremont has the first set at 6-3, position four. And here we are at number one singles. Of a set point for Claremont freshman. What an unbelievable point! The passing shot. Oh, my goodness. Luke Wynn is now has an opportunity to break back. Ivick Morido, freshman from California. And there it is. Luke Wynn battles, gives the fist pump, and it is going five all. That's tough when you got a grad senior playing against a freshman in a big moment, and it's 27 points all. Can't be closer. So many close scoreboards. We're just going to keep an eye on it all. We'll get you introduced to all the matches on this other duel. We're going to stay here at number one singles just for a few more points.
Oh wow, the lob is in. The lob is in. Luke was a transfer from the University of San Francisco. Washu hasn't won a title since 2008. But Roger Fulmer has been in the quarters or better every year since 2007. What a consistency. That has a love hole after being set points down. Big momentum shift for the grad senior. Let's shift over. Single six. Let's go to six singles in this match. Six singles, we've got Eric Quo, who's a freshman, taking on Daniel Blackman, Jr. Daniel Blackman's no stranger to these courts. Son of Martin Blackman, head of USGA Player Development. And I haven't seen Daniel Blackman in a lot of years. Great to be watching and covering him today. Blackman on the near side, Claremont. Moves up and tries to take the return early. Not a bad idea. Just broke posture a little bit as he was getting ready to produce the shot. So important to keep your head above your waist on returns and anything that's aggressive minded. Poles 11 2 on the season. Blackman 5 and 6 in duels, 7 and 6 overall. That goes wide. Just love the fact that all these teams are so well trained. Great rituals, everyone's using the towel, taking their time. 15-30, Blackman two points away. ball sneak black one's just a little bit too far away from the volley didn't catch it on the sweet spot missed it it looked strange on our screen because it looked like he had made it as a drop volley but it bounced on his side first and he was trying to low co to sleep and then sneak in and try to steal one at the net not a bad choice he's definitely trying to look to do some all court things just haven't worked out for him this game 30 all. And there he comes. Fortune favors the bowl. Blackman for the third time this game making the net appearance. Misses the first two but doesn't get denied there. And now on the receiving end of things applying a lot of pressure. Set point for Claremont. Big first serve by Quo. 
Deuce. Deciding point. Break point. And set point. here in this duel across the scoreboard Fook win wins that first set 7 5 which is huge for Washu oh nice job good defense by Blackman Cole was in the power position in that point able to win that Bali sails wide. Okay, like I was saying, Fukuin came back from saving set points on Maridu. Won the first set 7 5. So Washu has three first sets. Four now first sets. One, two, three, and five. Washu again needing to win four singles. Claremont needing to win three. Blackman seems like he's trying to build the point, but he's he's a little tight slash tentative, not swinging as completely racket head speed free as he's building. Clearly wants to organize it and then transition. Seems to be strong inside the service box. One off. Good serve, great footwork there. Eric Quillis doing his job. Holding the serve, sending the ball to the other side, putting the pressure, pressure on Blackman. To keep pace in this breaker. Pressure on Blackman. Blackman is the one, the one applying most of the pressure, but here, Coach trying to flip the script. And I'm keeping an eye on our Tufts and Emory scoreboards as well. Still 3 1 Tufts. After a sweep in doubles and a Charlie James victory for Emory. Claremont up 2 1 here, needing three wins. Wash U needing four wins, but four first sets to Wash U. What a point! The crowd's going wild. I guess it was called wide. I couldn't tell from the screen. I guess Blackman's passing, passing shot was called wide. 
four two. Eric Quo. bottom of our screen. Blackman is yeah, it was a little bit of a half in, half out there. He's been so aggressive on the returns, been applying pressure. It looked like he wasn't sure how big he wanted to go. Didn't get outside of, get out of the way of the ball and a little bit too close to it. So now it's 5-2. With the free point. Blackman serving 2 5. It's a big moment for this duel. There we go. Come on. And Quo with another passing shot, and he is in a such a powerful momentum shift in this breaker. Everything's gone his way. Brings him to a set point. Looks like we may be having a set, a match point at Tufts number one as well. So we may be taking a look at that after this point. Nice job by Blackman showing that he can play the longer points and just be steady and make balls. There's always a portion of the match where you have to have that no-miss mentality in tennis, regardless of what your aggression levels are like. Six-three Claremont. And there it is. Game and first set. The irony. Mr. Quo going to the net and being successful in winning. Switching over to the other's bank of courts. Match point Sharda for Tufts. Oh, and the volley. Essis with the volley save. And now it's going to do it. Game, set, match. Shard up. 6-3, 5-1, 6-3, It was 5-1, and now he's got the last game. So that's going to give Tufts a 4-1 lead. And they just need Jokic at number six singles to come through. But they're going to most certainly need it. Luxanovic now, the number two singles to split sets. Shaw is up 6-4-3-2 for Emery. 
Van Cotham, 6'4", but now 4'2", Xavier Gonzalez. So there's been a little bit of a shift. A little bit of a shift in the scoreboard. It's tough as fighting back now. It's not so black and white. There's some shades of gray in some of these matches. stiff there it's always important to have your upper body and your lower body working together on those rally balls that caught upright easy to send the ball flying in that situation Big time forehand. Just don't think that Cooper's expecting Jokic to go for that. It's so easy to slip into saying Djokovic instead of Jokic. is a big moment right there because when you're already up a set and you're trying to close out that scoreboard pressure that separation is such a feel good such a shot in the confidence arm tufts three games away despite the all of the amazing competitiveness and battling that's going on in this duel emory will come up a little short if number six singles goes the way of Tufts. I just think that if he has the right combination he has now like this, this, I'm going to be steady on my backhand, and then I'm going to pulverize you with my forehand. That mentality he's in right now is probably the best place he could be and gives this team an opportunity, in my opinion, to close. Just shows you how important all of those tiebreakers and doubles were. Doubles point enormous in college tennis. a little bit of his forehand hitter mentality on that. fault pivotal game here a 
looks like Gonzalez at number five singles is trying to force a third set. First serve is just what the doctor ordered there. coach for encouragement. Wash you on the other side of the building is as clutch as you can be. 7-5 at 1, 6-4 at 2, 7-5 at 3, 7-5 at 5, 7-5 at 6. Five out of six first sets for Wash U on the other side of this duel. Oh my goodness. No such thing as an easy shot in tennis. That overhead is missed. Coop is back in business. Back on serve. We're going to shift. Over to court number two in the Tufts and Emory match. Court number two. Oh, that's a big time forehand just as we switch. Dean Kamina from Hinsdale. It's an overplayed Vuk Vuksanovic. Montenegro, the sophomore, up a break in the third, but Kamina is trying to break back here. This becomes critical match as well. Not that they all are, but in terms of closest to a, a, a possible victory, where Tufts only needs one more. Oh, wow. Halfway through the point, it almost looked like the point was over, but it wasn't. Vuksanovic was, was trying to hit sort of a higher rally ball roll because Kamenev has a little bit of a, like a snaky wrist, if you will, almost like a Kachanov kind of wrist on his forehand, but it allows him 
when it's in a zone to rip the down the line winner like you've seen twice in this game. So the the strategy for Vukzanovic to, to hit the high roll cross court, he's got to get some more weight behind that shot. Otherwise, Kamenev's going to get the best of that rally. He made that? <laughs> wow. ESPN highlight reel. He, he's making sure everybody saw it. You better not celebrate too long. 2-2 two, two in the third is an important period. And you got to stay on top of the task at hand. But erasing that break that he was down in the third really just gives his team a shot in the arm. So many body blows in these dual matches. We're going to leave this right now. And we're going to shift over to position two in the Claremont McKenna and Wash U match. We're going to get position two in Claremont McKenna and Wash U, and we're going to put singles four and singles five in the small box. Abi Ramaredi, senior. He has had a lot of experience in some of these big match moments. Unfortunately, some of them didn't go his way. Got clinched on a couple times the last couple of years. Wasn't was great throughout the season as one of the hottest players for Washu coming in. 14 and 3. and a sophomore from Pennsylvania, 14 and five on the season, 14 and seven overall. Lefty on the near side of your screen, serving, two, four, deuce. Wow, that is some ball. Heavy roll into the backhand, draw the short ball, crush the inside out forehand, and thunk the overhead with authority. I don't know if there's a such thing as a better played point than that, but that was a big point at a big moment, clutched by the senior. He's been here, he's been in these tough situations and hadn't been getting over the hump, and today it looks like he may be delivering a huge point for the team because again they are down 2-1 but looking to try to win four out of the six of these singles Gaurav Singh Jr. Oh Oh, Garof Singh pumping his hand up there on the near side, the junior. On the far side. Christian settles. Settles 8-8 eight and eight in duels, 10-10 and 10 in the season. Son of Coach Paul Settles. Oh, 
Ten. We are in Division Three Pandemonium, United States National Tennis Center, Collegiate Center, Lake Nona, Florida. For those that don't know, that's just outside the Orlando Airport, one of the best facilities in the world. It's good tennis. Divisions one, two, and three all colliding and battling across these courts. Special Collegiate Center dedicated to college tennis had to use more than just that. Crack Rackets bringing you coverage all three weeks of the championships. Alex Gruskin, Mark Bay, Perry Cheyenne. Doing our best to try to give you a glimpse into each and every one of these matches. Nice backhand draws the error. Now Settles has a break point to try and go up 5-1 and serve for the match. Must be ready. At court two, there may be a match point for Rama ready. We'll see, we'll keep an eye on it. is right and gets the pass there's the 5-1 let's switch over to court number two Abhi Rama ready oh passing shot by Robinson is in Gutsy call on the match point. Trying to go for the gusto on the serving volley play. Robinson found his toes. He volleyed up. But he volleyed up to his forehand and on the run. Robinson gets the pass by him. Still two match points. And he does it again. He goes after his forehand again. I just think that he's thinking in his mind, I'm just going to go for it. But I don't think that he's kind of putting it together, that he's just gone twice into the forehand with pace. But Robinson had time and opportunity. If you're going to approach, my big word in that instance is making your passing shot player uncomfortable. Robinson didn't look uncomfortable there. Mass point. And he just says, okay, forget the approach shots. It's ace time. A la Kyrgios. Avi Rama ready. Evens this duel. We are two all. The senior gets over the hump. Now 15 and three on the season. That is huge with a capital H for Coach Roger Fulmer and Washu. Go back to position four. Eye on Tufts and Emery. Jokic is up 4-2 in the third in the second set, rather. So he's only two games away from closing out. We'll keep an eye on that. Right here. 
settles, top of your screen, serving, son of Paul settles. What a point. Oh, I, I am just shocked that Settles is going 100% Conti. He just went slice and dice exclusively the entire point. Looking maybe to draw an unforced error there, but ended up coughing up a short ball and allowing Singh to dictate and finish. It's time to close out the match. You're up 6-3-5-1. I'm a little surprised at the 100% Conti point there. Maybe it's a lot of respect for the ripping and on the rise ball striking of Singh. Thirty all. for the drop shot it sits up too high and he rips it right at him handcuffs him Bluffed him. He hit sort of a weaker serve and kind of gave a, a stutter step forward like he was going to serve in volley, but he wasn't. Just enough to distract him. Oh, it was a cat and mouse move there. It is a coach's son. Okay, match point. Oh, that's big time. What a play. Well, we're going to have to come back for a match point here. We need to get some eyes on some other courts. We need to shift over. Go to court number six. Go to court number six on Tufts and Emory. Well, it looks like we just missed the deciding point. Sorry, we missed it. And it was won by Emery. Oh, that is enormous. So that, that plot's going to thicken for a little while longer. Let's go back to, to, to uh, actually court five of Claremont and Washu. We haven't gotten eyes on that court. Court five. Claremont and Washu. Bam versus Scruggs. Court five, Washi, Claremont.
We have Scruggs and Fam. So this match is just split now and is going into third. Colin Scruggs, the freshman, six and five on the season. One of the more improved players on the team. Going against another freshman, Warren Pham from California. So these guys, I guess it looks like one of them is taking a bathroom break. So we will we'll come back and check in with them. Let's go to number one singles, Wash U and Claremont. Here they come. It's just really difficult. With six matches going on, it's one thing, but 12 going on at the same time, there's just a lot of tennis and there's a lot of challenging situations that we hate to miss. We haven't gotten eyes on this match and we promise we'll come back to it. But actually, we're gonna have to shift over to court number two, Tufts and Emery. Apologies. We're going to shift over to court two, Tufts and Emery. My apology. The boy from Hinsdale, Illinois, Dean Kamenev, just gets the match point with a free point on the serve. 6 3, 2 6, 6 3 for Emery. So now that makes this a 4 2 match. The two big forehands. It's a great point for Emery on the board now when they needed it. And now the dominoes start falling. Let's go to court three, Tufts and Emery. sure what's happening is there a medical timeout guys are running across the court but I'm not sure where the players are unless our scoreboard is behind and Shah has already won the match. I'll double check. You know, it says it hasn't won the match. Not sure what's going on there. We'll keep an eye out. Let's go back to court six. Court six, Tufts and Emery. Here at number one singles for Wash U. That's a big forehand from Reddy. This is a tough one. Again, he's a freshman. He's played so well. He's had an amazing season, 20 and 4. He had a set point here against the, the grads, senior veteran. And we're going two box. Sing and settles. We're ready and win. Ready. Excuse me, Redu. Redu is serving, saving match points. Match 
one for sing for settle, excuse me, receiving. And he's sticking with the continental. And there's the match point. There's double match point. Bing bing. Wash you in the drop of a hat. Bing bing. Wash you gets a win. Claremont gets a win. Long oh. two games in a row with deciding points after being up 4 2 in the third, and he loses them both. He could have been done, and he knows it. He knows mentally that he could have been done, and the match is still going. Tennis is so difficult. This is not football where you run out the clock in the fourth quarter running the ball. This is not basketball where you get fouled and shoot free throws and run out the clock. This is tennis. You got to do the work and all the work until the finish line is over. College tennis, one of the most dynamic athletic endeavors. Obviously, I'm biased. I'm a tennis guy. But it really is. I played baseball. I played basketball. I almost got to play football. I understand them all. These matches coming down to the wire, going into the, the tiebreakers in the last match on. It's almost like penalty kicks in a World Cup soccer. Uh, looking to close out. for Shaw. Oh, what a get. Great athleticism at the net. Another match point for Shaw receiving. It gets 
completely erased again. He is also playing super tight. These moments, being able to keep yourself loose and keep swinging free when you know what's at stake. Always easier said than done. bunch of match points that were not handled. I like that. I like that. The quality. I think we need to just go two box with number numbers three and six of Tufts and Emery. Two box with numbers three and six Tufts and Emery. So you see the tiebreaker is Don Chevin Shaw on the right. Jokic on the left of our screen, trying to close the door and end it for Tuss. Hoop serving on the near side. Jokic on the far side, on the left side of the screen. Yeah. And that is what has been the recipe all day long. Jokic has been hitting those forehands, having all kinds of time and opportunity to move forward, picking his corners with the short balls and having his way. Three points away, and again, the momentum with Shaw blowing all the match points. Now he's down three love in this breaker. And now he's down four love. And don't think that not, not closing out these games isn't hurting his teammate a couple courts away. by Jokic serving volley by Tufts misses the volley a little bit of a window for Shaw now from 4-love down to 4-2 they change sides Yeah! 
to over here. The other match is tied up at three all. Discussions with the coaches here, taking a lot of time. We are at triple team match point. And it's called long. No, no excuse me, it's on the line and there's a celebration. It was on the back of the line, good sportsmanship. Calls the ball good, that's on the line. Have a lot of respect for that. There's a lot of character there, Coach Browning's team. But Tufts gets through with a sweep at doubles and wins at one and six. They move on to Monday semifinals. And they will play the winner of the match that's on the other side. The battle that's going on between Wash U and Claremont. So three out of four pieces to the puzzle. Case Western 5-1 over Gustavus. Middlebury, dramatic 4-3 fashion over Bowden. And as you just saw, Tufts with three doubles and one and six singles move on to the semifinals. And we need the last team to punch their card. We have three matches still in play. Number three singles, Freer and Phillips, just starting the third set. We have number five singles, Fam and Shrugs, 2-1 in the third set. And we have Blackman and Co. with Co. here trying to return and break to win and put Wash U up 3-2. Daniel Blackman, serving top of the screen. Oh, what a point. Daniel Blackman was just kind of playing possum there and trying to grind and see if he could induce an unforced error. And it just ended up leaving one a little shorter. Eric Quo decides to take it, rip it, follow it, does so. But had to make a shoelace backhand volley to get the point. That's a great start to the game. If you're a St. Louis fan, Midwest versus California, Division Three battle. Forehand misses the mark. Love 30. And a love 40. The backhand goes into the net. Quality return. A lot of momentum now. And not one, not two, not three, but four match points in no ad format for Wash U. Yeah. 
Serve and volley by Blackman. And the pass. What a pass up the line. Great first volley by Blackman, but he gets denied. And the match is over at number six singles. And we are now in a two-horse race. Wash U only needs one more. Claremont needs them both. Wash U up one love at number three singles. Claremont up 3 1 40 15 here. And now Claremont is up 4 1 at position five. Let's concentrate just on court uh, three for a little bit. Let's just go full screen court three. Ian Freer, Jr. from California. Jared Phillips. Also a junior. Fans are getting to see exactly why college tennis is so exciting and why it's deserving of coverage. People need to see, watch, observe, feel these moments, not just read about them. to be an upper break double faults to lose the game that's a big moment because that scoreboard pressure of being up to love in a deciding set would have been very helpful because now as you can see in the two box a two love lead for wash U would have been really helpful but now it's one all screen position five the left of your screen position three the only two matches left in this duel scrug seven five fam six three fam now four one in the third phillips seven five freer six four one all Great comebacks from Claremont after Wash U won both sets seven five in the first. There are 
four turns of matches here. We've got Division Three men starting the day, followed by Division Three men that you're currently watching. And then that sets the stage. Division Two women come. And then there's two rounds of that to close out the night. Great approaching. Looks like the players are stopping because there's a little. Is there a little moisture? Hmm, there may be a little moisture. Right at this juncture. Hmm. And whenever you see the line judges taking their foot and going across the line, that's always a sign that Mother Nature has come to join the party. Hopefully this is just a very light amount and not a strong because most certainly we'd like to be able to conclude this one sooner than later. It's such a business end of this, this dual match. Wash you just needing one more. But Claremont needing both. Claremont in great position at position five. So again, the recap. Case Western, 5-1 over Gustavus. Middlebury, 4-3 over Bowden. Tufts, 5-2 over Emory. And our current match, Wash U 4, Claremont 3, with two matches left to go. We are now in a little bit of a delay. We will come back, hopefully soon, with the conclusion of this match and a whole bunch more tennis as we bring you the continuing coverage of the NCAA 2023 tournament on Crack Rackets.
Well, that was quick. Only a couple little sprinkles. But we're back in action. Division three men's championships, the last quarterfinal match to finish. The winner of this gets to take on Tufts on Monday. Currently, 4-3 Wash U. Claremont won two out of three doubles. Wash U has taken three out of four singles. And we have two left to play. Again, Wash U needing to win five singles. Claremont only needing to win three singles. Excuse me, Wash U, only, Wash U needing to win four singles. I'm sorry, Emory needed to try to win five in that match against Tufts, and that just proved to be too much. Still shows, even though the, the doubles formats are different, still shows how significant being ahead either by one point, two points, or excuse me, by one point or three points it is for the doubles. We've got Claremont favorable scoreboards right now. Up 4-2 at number five singles. Sam and Shrugs. Both freshmen. Phillips and Freer in number three. Serving one, two on the left of your screen. Lefty. A great pass. Nice athleticism. Good one hander. Like Freer trying to come forward and put some pressure on him. Phillips 10 and 4 on the season. 10 and 4 overall. Freer 13 and 5 on the dual match season. 14 and 6 overall. There are a few individual tournaments that some of the players do play during the year. These teams do co and play in the national indoor championships where the teams that are in the what they call the NESCAC, New England schools, they don't go and play the national indoor because that's in February and they have a rule that you can't compete until March. So the Tufts and the Middlebury's of the world are not part of the national indoors, which can sometimes maybe explain why there's not seedings at this tournament. That's a huge point. Maybe called just wide. It's a big point there. Number five singles. Players are jockeying for position. Even being up a break, you're not really safe and no ad scoring. Things can turn on a dime. for Scruggs to break back at five.
I'm sorry, to hold actually. Well played. Big decision to go up the line on the forehand and pay dividends. Able to close out the game. Keep that score just as tight as possible. On the break, Fam will be serving. 4 3. Now, this is a good look at Ian Freer, Jr. from California, serving at the top of the screen. He was able to break. Phillips and put himself in the commanding lead here. Again, Claremont is, has to win both. And at this point, our upper break in both and are in position to do so. Still a long way from being done. But they're a little closer to a finish line than Wash U at the present moment. Men play today, the women play tomorrow. Big quarterfinal matches on the women's side coming tomorrow. Middlebury versus John Hopkins. University of Chicago versus Carnegie Mellon. Those are the 9 a.m.s. And at noon, Wesleyan versus Emory. And Amherst versus Claremont. Back to the two box screen, as you can see. spring break in Florida to get more comfortable with these conditions. Just wide. just joining us in the doubles point number one doubles Claremont 8-3 number two doubles Wash U 8-4 number three doubles 8-love Claremont so it's a 2-1 lead for Claremont after doubles number one singles goes to Wash U 5-5 five five. number six singles goes to Wash U 7-6-6-4 Number two singles also to Wash U. And Wash U builds a commanding lead. And Claremont comes back with settles. Coach's son winning at four. And now we're down to the last two matches. Number three and number five. Thank you. 
game away. And all eyes will switch over to position three. These guys are just two courts away, so every single point they play, they can hear and feel the emotion and whether or not their teammate won. Feeling it. He's swinging fear. Unintended. A little bit of the weather. Had a few more wind out here. It's a little bit calmer. When these matches started at 9 this morning, and now I'm seeing them after the slight drizzle we had. I'm starting to see these guys' shirts moving a lot more. And the ball tosses are drifting on the surfs. to see who's going to be the hero. Three-year breaks for 5-1 lead. Now we're in match game on both courts. Freer, Junior from California, bottom of our screen on the left, serving for the match, 5-7, 6-4, 5-1. Scruggs is Washu's best chance. He's got to try to find a way. Because Phillips looks like he may be done. Errant backhand missing. His aggressive athletic lefty game. He, he's, he's almost, not a poor man Shapovalov, but he, he definitely is playing in a, sort of an up-tempo lefty style. Division one guy that he reminds me of a little bit is Justin Boulay from Ohio State. Yeah, but that's just really smart tennis. Freer has got it going. He is neutralizing. He's defended the lefty. He's hit heavy rolls. He's coming forward. Now on that last point, he's chipping and charging and making Phillips come up with the goods on the backhand pass. It's just really high-level tennis. Wash you getting down 2 1 in that doubles. This is in the old days of Ross Putterman and Jeremy Bush. These guys have got to find ways to be up 2 1 to 3 love after the doubles. Local standout from Winneka, Colin Fox, has played a little bit at the Glenview Club, where our train is going to be transferring over after a gap year after starting at Brandeis and uh, hopefully helping out Coach Fulmer in uh, future years. But right now, Looks like they're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. 
Oh, what a shot to win. What a shot to win. He is amped. His teammates come over. Big hug from Blackman. Everybody's letting him know how big and how clutch that was. That set after Phillips had a, a break lead and had a chance to go to love, it just turned and went south in a hurry. Not all eyes. On Famine Scrubs. Bam serving for the match. Forehand goes long. 15 all. This is what they pay to see. Falling backwards, roping the inside in. That was like Dominique team level forehand falling backwards. Crossboard forehand. That wasn't the time to change direction. You gotta stay on the point there. Have to hang in there. It's not, not the moment to take the risk. It's too much riding on that. Match point, Claremont. Set point, match point, dual point, Claremont. Much time to think about it. Overplays it wide. Tennis. I still would like the guys who shake hands before the pylon unless it's the actual national championship match. That's just a little sportsmanship guy in me, but you got to give it up. Claremont gets what they need. Got out two matches after losing seven five first sets to get over the hump and get this completely done now. We know who is in the semifinals of this year's 2023 Division III National Championship. So the stage is set. What a day already. So much more coming up with the ladies division too. But right now, taking the horns from Alex Gruskin this morning and pulling it away here. It's been Case Western 5-1 over Gustavus in pretty dominant fashion, but then Bowden up 4-2, losing three in a row in the singles, the Middlebury sweeping the last three to beat them 5-4. And then obviously on our first match on this one, Tufts sweeps the doubles by winning two breakers and then getting wins at one and six to get over the hump. And now Claremont, after going up 2-1, needed to win uh, three of these matches and lost five first sets and come fighting back, tooth and nail, clawing, clawing, and then winning going away with these last two matches with both Freer and Fam getting it done for them. So 5-4 victory, tough, tough loss for uh, Wash U and Wash U Nation, but a well-deserved victory for Claremont. And I feel that the stage is set. 
Tufts and Case have probably been considered the one and two for the year, and it'll be interesting to see if they actually make a final. But there's so much parity, and the doubles point has so much drama and significance to it. I think that that's always going to set the stage and uh, allow for uh, probably the best finish that we've had in Division Three in a while. And I'm just so happy to be part of the Crack Rackets continuing coverage, as well as the fact that all Division One, Two, II, and Three are all at one place. It's just such a synergistic time, amazing year, and I, I just can't wait to be part of every single you know uh, extra point and part of the action that finishes. I, I'm tuned in, I'm dialed in, I'm locked in, and obviously I'm happy to be helping out with the coverage. We're going to stop for now for a very short period of time and be bringing you back the women's division two coming up here shortly, those quarterfinals. So for now, we're signing off. But again, thank you for watching Crack Rackets. And please continue to follow all the streams and all the action uh, because it's definitely going to be exciting. And it's been a full three weeks of May Madness and it's going to continue. We'll see you soon.